You're watching WCCO News, always streaming on CBS News Minnesota. Our live coverage of day two of the Apple River stabbing trial in Wisconsin continues now here on CBS News Minnesota. I'm Derek James. Nikolai Mew is accused of killing a teen and injuring four others in July of 2022. Defense attorneys for Mew say he was acting in self-defense when he stabbed five people on the Apple River in 2022. But the prosecution says he is the aggressor. Right now we are in a lunch recess until about 1245. The state has continued to call witnesses here this morning. Uh, Elena Hernandez, whose son Isaac was killed, gave emotional testimony uh, earlier this morning. We also heard from some of the teens that were on that float trip that day, including some who shot some of the video that is going to be uh, key to this case. We uh, also want to uh, share with you from earlier this morning, uh, one of those teens who was on the float trip and witnessed some of the events that took place. That's Alex Vang, and here's some of his testimony from earlier. Say your name for the record, please. Spell your last name. My name is Alex Vang. V A N G. How old are you, Alex? I'm 19 years old. Um, do you go to school? Do you work? Uh, I'm a student at St. John's University. Uh, what's your? What are you studying? Uh, global business leadership. Um, what year are you at St. John's? I'm a first year. Um, uh, were you familiar with a person named Isaac Schumann? I was. How did you know him? Uh, he's my best friend. How many years were you best friends with Isaac? Uh, seventh grade, I first met him. <clears throat> were you with um, Isaac Schumann on July 30th of 2022? Yes, I was. Um, were you part of a group of your friends that uh, took down the Apple River near Somerset, Wisconsin? Yes. <clears throat> Uh, were you with Ab uh, Isaac when he was stabbed and killed that day? Yes, I was. Um, it's my understanding from other testimony that you were the driver and drove everybody to the river? Correct. Um, to rent tubes at River's Edge? Yep. <clears throat> Do you remember if you got a receipt for the, the tubes? Um, I don't think so, no. <laughs> Do you remember what time you got on the river? Estimate maybe around 1, 1.30. All right. um, was your group together in, in the tubes? Yes. Were your tubes connected together? Yes. <clears throat> uh, what, what's, what's the plan to float down to uh, Village Park in Somerset? If that's at the end, yes. Right. Um, do you have plans for a return trip back to River's Edge? Um, say again. Did you have plans on how to get back from Village Park up to River's Edge? Yeah, we were going to either, probably going to find a ride. Right. <clears throat> um, while you were tubing the river, um, were you drinking alcohol? Yes, I was. What kind of alcohol did you have? Just some beers, some uh, Michelob Goldens, and maybe some, uh, um, the like ultras or something, whatever they're called. Did you have any hard liquor? I did not. Uh, do you know if anybody in your group was drinking hard liquor? I don't recall. Did you um, use any other drugs that day? Uh, yeah, I smoked some weed. All right. By weed, you mean marijuana? Yes, please. Or, yes. All right. Um, as you were floating down the river, did you eventually have contact with the defendant, Mr. Mew? Yes, I did. All right. Uh, do you know whereabouts you were in the river when you first saw him? I don't recall. I just know we were uh, a little bit away from a from a bridge. Had you been on the river before? I have. How many times? Just the uh, year previous. Um, when you first saw Mr. Mew, what was he doing? Um, he was just uh, looking in the water with some snorkeling gear. Right. Did you ask him what he was doing? I did. What did you say? He said, um, uh, you're snorkeling in some uh, pretty short water. Like, what are you looking for? And how did he answer? He said something along the lines of, he responded with uh, looking for little girls or something like that. All right. Are you aware that, um, we'll strike that. Did you record any part of your, your interaction with I did not. No, let me finish my question. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Is this your first time testifying? It is. Are you a little nervous? Yes. All right. 
Did you yourself record any part of the incident on the river? No, I did not. All right. Are you aware that somebody else in your group was? Yes. Who was that? Jawan Cockfield. Have you had a chance to review that video? Yep, I've watched it once. And are you, have you seen yourself in the video? Yes. Um, at the time that you asked Mr. Neal what he was doing and he responded like that, is any of that on the video? Uh, no. At some point, um, the Mr. Neal brought up on your group? He did. Uh, did that cause you concern? Yes, I was very scared. Did you fail on your tube? I did. Um, what did he do when he ran up? Um, from what I remember, he ran up to us and grabbed our tubes and stopped us from carrying on. All right, were you floating at that time? Yes, we were. He stopped you from floating? Yes. <clears throat> I want to show you a, a still frame from the video. Zero, five, six. screen. Alex, I'm showing you uh, frame 0156 of Jawan's video. Um, are you in that picture? That's me, yes. Um, does this describe when this picture was taken? I mean, what, what, what's going on when, when you're in the water there? Um, this must have been when he was running towards our tubes and um, was just about grabbing our tubes and I was just, I, I was off the tubes at that moment. Uh, whose leg is in the, the foreground of the picture? Um, I'd assume at the very bottom that's Jawan's. All right. <clears throat> at that point, had you separated yourself away from your raft of tubes? Yes, I did. Why? Um, I was concerned for my safety. Um, I didn't know what his intentions were running up on our tubes. All right. Is it fair to say that prior to him running up, uh, Juwan called him some names? Yes. All right. Um, were you involved in calling him any names before he ran up on the group? Yes. From what I saw, he was just by himself. Did he have a tube? No, not that I saw. When he ran up on you, were you able to see whether he had anything in his pocket? No. Uh, at any point during this interaction with him, did you know he had a knife? No. <clears throat> did you know Mr. Mew at all? I did not. Remember how long you've been on the river by the time you had this run in with him? Mm, I'd estimate maybe an hour, hour and a half. When he ran up and grabbed onto your raft of tubes, did he say anything that you heard? I don't recall. Did he, I know from the still we just looked at that you had gotten off your tubes, did he make any physical contact with you at all? Not me, no. At any time during this incident, did he ever have any physical contact with you? No. <clears throat> As he's grabbing onto your tubes, did you say anything to him? Um, I don't recall. Did you threat him in any fashion? No. Did you tell him he had 10 seconds to, to leave or anything like that? No. Um, you did call him some names? Yes, I did. What kind of names did you call them? Um, pedophile, predator. Maybe a dumb question, but you don't seem to be proud of that? No, sir. <clears throat> Do you agree that um, you boys probably weren't very kind to him? Yeah, I agree. In the context of what happened, though, do you know what his intentions were? No. Eventually, did you and your friends uh, start yelling at him to get away? Yes, we did. Uh, were you using raised voices? Yes. Um, you've seen that all on the video? Yes. 
Um, at some point, did uh, other folks come over to, to see what was going on? They did. Do you recall who was the, or can you describe the first person that showed up to? Um, the first person um, I saw come up was uh, maybe a small white lady. All right. Um, what did she do? Um, she pretty much just confronted him um, face to face, saying to leave these kids alone. Um, you, you, you could leave right now, just leave these guys alone. Did she swear at him? Um, I don't recall. All right. Uh, was she, did she have dark hair or blonde hair? Um, I don't recall, but my best estimate would be blonde. Right. At some point, did you see two women from another group confronting him? Yeah. And what was the other woman doing, the second woman? Um, from what I remember, she was just uh, next to the other lady. Um, I don't recall what she was really doing. Right. Did you hear her tell him to leave at all? Uh, a lot of people were telling him to leave. Right. Including you? Yes. At some point, um, as you reviewed the video, do you realize you guys are laughing at him? Yes. Um, why was that, if you know? Um, you know, I, I, he felt like um, it was kind of those situations where, like, you know, um, yeah, we, like, caught someone doing something wrong, and, you know, it's something like that. Uh, Did you think that he was getting in trouble from this other group? Yes, I was thinking that he was uh, finally about to leave and stop all the commotion that's going on. Were you feeling relieved? Objection. Sustained. <clears throat> Uh, say again. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There's an objection. I have to rule. Sustain means don't answer. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. So Next question. Is Mr. Muse talking to these the two women that are were they, were they standing in front of him, behind him? Where were they? Uh, the two women. Yes. They're in front of him. Did you ever hear him say, you know, get out of my way, let me go? I did not. Did you ever hear him call out for help? No. <clears throat> did you and your group of friends? Surround him? Um, I want to by that I mean encircle him. I'm going to object. I'm going to ask him to answer the question. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that all. I didn't I'm going to let him answer the question. He was trying to answer the question and he was interrupted. Oh, it's his witness. I'll let him interrupt his own witness. Did you encircle Mr. Mew before any of the fight started? Um, I wouldn't say circle. I would say we were standing near to him. Um, we weren't, yeah. All right, uh, if we can go to slide 2593. <laughs> if we can turn it on. I'm showing you a still frame 2593 from Jawan's video. Um, is this what you saw when you described the two women standing in front of him? Correct. Were any of your friends behind him? No. Um, in, in relation to this picture, where were your where was your group of friends located? I would say um, maybe uh, to the back and to the left. All right. Were you within arm's reach of him? Um, from this picture, no, I wasn't. That was earlier testimony from Alex Vang, friend of victim Isaac Schumann, uh, from earlier this morning before we got into our lunch recess, which should be wrapping up shortly. This is a sign that uh, we may be underway again in the next few minutes whenever they turn this camera back on in the courtroom. We've also seen a few of the attorneys already making their way in. Along with hearing from Mr. Vang, we also heard uh, from another of Isaac's friends, uh, Jawan Cook, in the first half of the day. Uh, in his testimony, he admitted uh, to calling Mr. Mew a raper and a pedophile. He also spoke to um, Mr. Mew punching one of the young women, Madison Cohen, who also testified this morning, but asked that uh, they, she testify without video or audio. So that's why we were unable to bring that to you. That is her right uh, to testify in the state of Wisconsin. Uh, we also, uh, when we heard from uh, the victim's mother, Isaac Schumann, this morning, she was uh, on the stand for less than 10 minutes, but gave some emotional testimony, tearful testimony about crawling into an ambulance looking for her son, finding out it was one of the other stabbing victims getting out of that ambulance 
and then looking over to see her 17 year old son laying in the riverbank, the defense choosing not to cross examine Hernandez uh, after her brief and emotional testimony, something uh, that our legal analyst here at WCCO, Joe Tamburino, says was a smart move by the defense to not question her uh, following that testimony. But he has noted in this live coverage that at times, it has felt like the defense has been much more aggressive uh, in their delivery and their content and that oftentimes the prosecution has had opportunities for objections and has just simply chosen not to take them. So that is something that we'll be watching for as we get into more of the state witnesses here as they make their way in this afternoon. So we'll continue to have the state calling witnesses. We've been told in all about 40 uh, will testify uh, over the course of this trial, which right now on the calendar is scheduled for 10 days or two weeks. There were a couple of issues that uh, were brought up this morning before the jury was brought in. Uh, the defense being concerned that the pool camera is showing the personal computer screens of the defense. Uh, Judge Michael Waterman basically saying not an issue as those in the courtroom who are viewing are also able to see them. But there were other concerns about the microphone setup from the defense saying that at times they're able to hear the whispering that it's coming up uh, their conversations with the defendant. Uh, Judge Waterman saying that the setup at the tables will be changed in order to try to mitigate that. And then the defense also asked that some of the media not be shown some of the exhibits. Uh, he denied that motion saying that that's something that will not happen. Uh, the defense also moved their laptop so you'll notice that when uh, we get back into view here uh, in just a few minutes. I want to go back to the courtroom right now. Uh, you're seeing that wider view there or the view of the judge's desk and obviously once they bring the jury in and get everyone uh, seated we'll be going again. I want to talk just a little bit about what we saw yesterday from the opening statements. Uh, the prosecution showed a lot of still images, often frame by frame, in uh, three or four picture vignettes. Uh, also showed some small clips of the video uh, in question that was shot, uh, much of it by uh, Jawan Cockfield, who spoke this morning. Um, there was one uh, part of the session this morning when Cockfield was on the stand and he watched some of the video and heard himself yelling, that's not bike, that's not bike, numerous times, that's not Isaac. After looking down and seeing Isaac Schumann in the water, he became uh, emotional, began to cry after watching that video and hearing his own voice. He, of course, spoke to police uh, following the incident, and uh, he says he then went to the hospital to be near Isaac. The defense really uh, asking why his group and the other group, the Carlson group, uh, that moved in, why they didn't uh, let um, Mr. Mew get away from them uh, after they say that he had said he was looking for little girls when he came by with his snorkel. Uh, he said he didn't know why they were taunting him, but then went uh, to explain that he witnessed Mr. Mew punching Madison Cohn with what he calls a hook punch, but did not see her go down, something that is not on uh, any of the video that was shot on that day in July of 2022. Uh, he then says that Mr. Mew attacked and then started stabbing something which took place within about a time frame of just 20 to 25 seconds. Uh, we will also be joined here this afternoon by Defense Attorney Joe Tamburino. He has uh, said repeatedly to us that really thus far uh, there have been a lot of opportunities for the prosecution to object to some of what the defense was bringing in. Uh, especially some of the questions that were asked to Jawan Cookfield about being a strong football player and if that makes him more of a violent person. Uh, that was something that we did not hear uh, objections from the prosecution and Joe Tamburino thinking that that was a bit of a miss that they could have really argued that that has nothing to do with uh, this particular situation. And also we've heard from the defense uh, time and time again that uh, they've referred to Mr. Mew as an old man. He was 52 at the time of the incident, 54 now. It appears now we're getting uh, things back going underway in the courtroom, so let's listen in now. Stay standing.
right, please be seated. Members of the jury, welcome back. I'm glad you're here. I hope lunch was good. Uh, the attorneys are present along with Mr. Mew. We are ready to resume the afternoon session. Uh, Mr. Anderson, who will be the next witness? We call it Dante Carlson. Okay, hey, Mr. Carlson. Is this Mr. Carlson? Oh, it's great. Actually, I'll, I'll do Quentin first. Sure. Okay, uh, Quentin Carlson, please come forward. <clears throat> Uh, please face the clerk. Raise your right hand. She will administer the oath. Do you swear that the testimony you are about to give in this matter shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth is all the time? Please have a seat in the witness chair. All right. Mr. Smith, or uh, Mr. Anderson. Can you please state your first and last name for the record? Quentin Carlson. And can you spell your last name? C A R L S O N. Can you go by a nickname sometimes? Q. And how old are you? 50, uh, 50, sorry. And are you, can you look over at the board there? Uh, I can't see it, I'm sorry. Well, here, actually, I'll hand it to you. 28, is it 26? Are you in the yellow shirt there? I am. Okay. And so you were too being with these folks on July 30, 2022? Yeah, my birthday. Was it your was that your actual birthday? Yes, sir. Was tube is was tubing on the river kind of a tradition for your birthday? It it was. It was something you, my wife had started before she passed. So it was our sixth year going down the river. And had you tubed on that river before? I had, but not in years. Normally we went down the Namakagan, but due to some issues we'd had there, we changed the venue. And while you were tubing, at some point did something catch your or your group's attention? Yes. What was that? Um, we had come around to Ben and noticed uh, a group of teens that were calling and beckoning, uh, beckoning us to come help them. Um, at that point, um, I had told my boys to stop our tubes and I observed for a minute and uh, at that point I saw Mr. Mew charge their tubes and stop the tubes from progressing down the river. I saw him acting in an aggressive and, and drunken manner, um, and I just thought that it probably was going to end badly if it didn't de-escalate. Uh, I asked my two boys to go over there and uh, make sure nothing happened. I never dreamed it would turn into what it did. And what was your... Did you have a specific fear regarding escalating, whether that was Mew or the boys, both, one or the other? Um, at, the, at that time, the boys were all sitting in their tubes, but the way he was acting and the way he was, um, you know, he was st literally standing, the tubes had kind of wrapped around his legs and he was stopping the tubes from going down the river. And I thought at some point, you know, the boys at that point were still calling out for us to come help them, but I thought if those boys get off their tubes, they're going to beat the brakes off of this guy. And he's drunk and, uh, you know, obviously wasn't making good decisions. So um, we own a bar, and uh, my boys are good at de-escalating fights and calming people down. And so I told Tony to go over there, and I told Dante to follow him. Um, the girls were the first off their tubes and had run over there ahead of it, but uh, it was Tony and Dante that I had asked to go over there. And did you, at some point, did the incident turn physical? Um, it did. And uh, to be honest with you, I, I was still across the river. Uh, the river was very rocky at that point, and uh, I, I don't walk so well. Um, 
and uh, but Maddie had come running to me. He punched me. He punched me, and the next thing I knew, I had a string of boys running at me. You know, first my son Tony, and then Dante yelling, "Daddy, stab me!" And I just remember thinking, "Stab you? Stab you with what?" You know, I, I mean, I just I was bewildered and. Did I just you didn't realize what was going on until I saw AJ literally disemboweled. Um, and at that point, it just erupted into chaos, and we tried to get the kids to the riverbank. And uh, Dante went running up river for help. I mean, it really just it was a matter of seconds, and it the whole thing had changed. So. And today you used um, Nikolai Muse, I think you called him Mew, but fair, you didn't know his name at the time. No, no, I had no idea who he was. You didn't know the other group of tubers either? No. So you, did you, were you kind of over by your tube still? I was still on my tube until Maddie came running over. It was after she said that he punched me, he punched me, and I started looking at her face, and um, and then literally within seconds, you know, the boys were coming at me, and I was trying to assess their injuries and trying to make sense of it all, you know, in mere moments. Did you see anything on Maddie's face of injury? Yeah, I mean, her eye was red and swollen. Like so, skin around the eye, or what do you mean? I mean, her cheek was all puffed out. I mean, it was clear that she had been struck. Given how far away you are, you didn't actually see any of the stabbings or the... No, I saw Dante strike Mr. Mew. Um, and I had yelled out, you know, to stop because I didn't know what was going on at that point. Uh, that was prior to knowing that he had hit Maddie and, and prior to, uh, um, prior to knowing that anyone had been stabbed. Um, Did you see where Nikolai went? I didn't. I honestly was... I was worried about my kids. I, I wasn't paying attention to where he went. I, I almost, you know, I, I was looking at my kids, not looking upriver, not looking at what was going on. Um, AJ's injuries were so severe, and I hate to admit it, but I was worried about my son Tony, and my son Tony was taking care of AJ, and there was nothing going to pull Tony off of AJ, and so. Um, I, I really was just very focused on, on Tony. I know I had sent Sheena and a couple others, uh, Sheena and uh, Janelle, upriver to after Dante to make sure he was okay and to try and get us some help. You know, um, there I knew that shortly downriver there was a uh, sheriff's stand where they monitored the river. I just didn't know how far it was. I had actually thought it was closer than it was. And so I hoped that they were able to get a hold of the sheriff there. Um, Nothing else, Judge. Mr. Nelson? Mr. Carlson? I want to ask you some questions about your birthday, okay? Sure. Um, it wasn't just your birthday, it was also celebration of Madison Cohen's birthday as well, correct? Um, no, that, not was, that I'm aware Would it surprise you if Madison Cohen testified that it was a celebration of her birthday? No, it wouldn't surprise me. Okay. I, I mean... Do you know her very well? Through my kids. Okay. I've, I've gotten to know her much better since this incident. Sure. Um, on that day, though, fair to say, it was you and your friends, there was a, including you, there was like 11 of you. Is that right? I mean, I can count it for you. There was two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven of us, yeah. Um, and the 11 of you were celebrating, correct? 
Correct. And part of that celebration involved consuming alcohol. <sighs> I get where you're going with that, but the reason we went to the Apple River, I put a limit on how much alcohol the kids could bring because we'd had a problem with drinking on the Namakog, and, and I didn't want a bunch of drunken people at my birthday that year. Sure, understood. But in the past, you... Uh, I wasn't drinking at all, so... Understood. A um, couple of things there. So you said that in the past you had trouble with people maybe in your group drinking too much when they were on the river. Absolutely. Okay. And when people were drinking too much on the river, in your experience, that caused problems, for lack of a better term? Well, we had the group size had grown to 50, 60 people in the past, and so we wanted to keep it a small, controlled group. Sure. Uh, and I'm asking about the previous time. I'm going to get back to July 30th, but you sure. mentioned something about the Namakog, and so I want to ask you some about that. Make sure. sense? That experience of yours was when... It goes to his credibility about what he's saying about today and his it, impressions. It was, it was raised in direct. I'll let, <clears throat> give you a little bit of latitude to explore it. Your experience uh, on the Namakagan was that when people on the river tubing drink too much, it causes problems. Yes. Okay. So now back to July 30th. Mm -hmm. Okay. On that day, you're with your 11 people and everyone's celebrating, correct? Okay. Yes? Uh, I wasn't there. I'm trying to gather facts. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I don't know what you mean by celebrating. We were quietly floating down the river until we were called upon. Lots of different ways to celebrate, correct? Sure. Sometimes it's just you celebrate with your words, right? Sure. Sometimes people consume alcohol as part of that celebration, correct? Absolutely. Sounds like you weren't doing that, right? That's correct. But other people in your group were, correct? Yes. And in fact, there's a photo that you have in front of you which they're actually consuming alcohol in the photo, correct? That is correct. Is part of that photo in order to document not only the celebration, but the consumption of alcohol on that day on the river? I don't think anyone was trying to document the consumption of alcohol. It's just a coincidence that of the people in that photo, four of the people are actually consuming alcoholic beverages while the photo's taken? Yeah, I, I, I guess I don't think it was... I don't know that there was any exact intent in that. Um, you know, they were having fun. Sure, and part of having fun was for them to drink alcohol, right? I, I, I think you're putting a lot of emphasis on it when the emphasis wasn't there. I appreciate that maybe the emphasis wasn't. I'm just trying to gather the fact. They were drinking alcohol, yes? Uh, yes, we've stated that a couple times. Okay. Um, now, as you know, there's a, a, a couple of videos involving what we're here to talk about in this trial. Is that right? Yes. Have you seen any of the videos regarding what I happened? I have not first? seen it yet. Okay. Um, so there's some things that you've said that are maybe in the video, and so I'm trying to put things into context with you, even though you haven't seen the video, if that makes sense, okay? Sure. Um, what I gather from you is you were watching, and at some point you see Nikolai Mew approach uh, this group of six teenagers, is that right? Charge, yeah. Okay, you use the word charge. Whether there's a video on it, we'd get to decide that, correct? But that's what you remember, correct? Yes. Okay, and as he goes towards them, he's coming from upstream, walking downstream, is that right? Um, no, he would have been downstream coming upstream. Okay, so your memory is he's coming... He was in front of them and walked, ran back up river at them. Okay, that's what your memory is. Well, that's what happened. It may or may not have been what happened, but that's what your memory is, right? Okay. Uh, yes. Um, you would agree if we were going to rely upon your memory or the video, the video might be more reliable? Certainly. Okay. Um, 
At some point, you look over there and um, Nikolai Mew and these six, uh, did you know how many there were other than you said a group? No, they were sitting in their tubes, so I mean, I, and I didn't take a head count. Sure. If I told I, you that there's been identified six people in that group, would that surprise you? No. Sound about right? Certainly. I would have thought there was more, honestly. Okay. Um, and at some point, you look over to there and you see Nikolai Mew standing in between the tubes in the direction that the tubes are trying to go downstream. That's what your testimony is? Correct. Okay. Um, Show you what, can I permission to approach? Yes. Show you what I've marked as exhibit number 101. You see that, sir? Yes. And you see on the bottom of this it says upstream. Okay. And you see up there it says downstream. Correct. And there's a red circle that says G2. Yep. And then there's six red dots over here. Do you see that? Yep. And then there's a blue dot with an M in it, correct? Correct. So if I were to tell you that G2 represents your group, number two, and that G1 represents the group of the six people, and the blue dot is Mr. Mew, does that make sense to you? Yes, I would say it's a little inaccurate, but okay. we were directly across the river, not behind them. Okay. This G2 up to here? Correct. Is that more accurate? Yes. The six dots over here, does that appear to be accurate? Yeah, now you weren't you weren't documenting, but does it look like what you saw? At what point? Um, because sure. during my viewing, they were they were all still sitting in their tubes. It wasn't until after Madison had been struck that everyone got up out of their tubes. Okay. And Madison was running towards me, so at that point, I really didn't see that. I, I was watching the kids. I had lost. Let me. I'm going to go back view of them. Stats, and leave this up here. Okay. Um, so is it your testimony that the six, the, the other group, I'm going to call them the, the teenagers, the six teenagers, they stayed in their tube until Maddie came over there? I believe so, yeah. Okay. Yeah, they were, they, were, I, they were sitting in their tubes calling for help. Okay. So your memory is two things. One is they were sitting in their tubes until Maddie came. Agreed? Yes. And your memory is that they were calling for help. Agreed? Agreed. And if the plane of that video contradicts that, would you agree your memory is wrong? Yeah, but yeah I mean, if it contradicts it. Okay. Um, what you remember is that whatever you saw, it raised concerns that you wanted to make sure that something got de-escalated, correct? Correct. And so as a result of that, you told your two sons, Dante Carlson and Anthony Carlson, to go over there, correct? Correct. And I believe you, you spoke with the police about that, right? Yes. And what you told the police was, I was worried about that group of kids against one guy. I was worried that they were all going to gang up on him and something bad was going to happen to the old guy. Is that what you told the police? Absolutely. And the reason you told that to police is because that was what you were thinking. That was your actual worry, correct? Right? I mean, that was, that was my concern. And my concern was because he wasn't walking away. He was drunk and he was absolutely being aggressive to those kids. At one point, their tubes had wrapped around his legs, and he was just refusing to walk away from them, even though they were screaming for anyone on the river to help them. Okay. Again, I appreciate that that's your memory. I want to unpack some of that. You said um, that it was your impression that Nikolai Mew was drunk, correct? Yes. And that was based upon your observation from 150 feet away for about 90 seconds? <laughs> Yes. Okay. You don't actually know if he had consumed how much alcohol, do you? Well, I've had a lot of experience observing drunk people. Sure. It certainly fit the bill. Okay. But my question, sir, was you did not know if at all he had drank any alcohol. Agreed? I didn't know, in fact, he had drank any alcohol. Sure. Um, 
you, what you saw is essentially him perhaps uh, unsteady on his feet in the water, correct? No. Well, you couldn't smell him, agreed? No. And you didn't observe him drinking alcohol, agreed? Agreed. You couldn't hear him say anything, agreed? Agreed. You didn't hear him have slurred speech, agreed? Agreed. So whatever your conclusion was as to his drunkenness, it must have been based upon how you observed his body moving around. Agreed? It was more his behavior. Okay. And his behavior is your observations of his body moving around, correct? Again, it wasn't because he was unsteady on his feet. Okay. It was the way he charged at the tubes. It was the just the way he carried himself. Okay. And again, this is all based upon your memory, right? Yes. All right. So you sent the boys over there because you didn't want an old man, I think as you said here, uh, to get the brakes beat off of him, correct? That is correct. I, I think we've heard different expressions here. Maybe, uh, would that be similar to, to get a beat down? Correct? Yes. Or maybe some other people call it uh, to get beat up. Would that be the same? That would be the same. And I think one witness it called it uh, getting his butt kicked. Same thing? There. Those are all kind of interchangeable terms. The same thing. All right. That's what you were worried about, right? Yes. And part of that was based upon the fact that you saw that he was one man and there were these six teenagers, correct? No. I just thought it was because he was drunk. Sure. Okay. Um, would you have been worried about one drunk man on the river if there was one teenager standing there? I don't know if I would have or not. Okay. The words that you used to the police was, I was worried that they were all going to gang up on him, correct? I was. And the reason that you asked, uh, used the word gang up on him is because you were concerned he was outnumbered. Agreed? Again, that wasn't my thought process. Okay. You just so. used the word gang up even though it wasn't your thought process? Yes. Okay. And then... Um, I thought he would continue to provoke them until they did something. Okay. And this is, again, your observations from 100 feet away? Sure. Did you hear any words that he said? No. All you heard was the boys screaming for help? Correct. Did you hear the boys say he's a predator? I heard him say that he's a pedophile. Okay. I didn't give it much credence at the time. Okay. You had no reason to believe that, correct? No. Um, you had no you had no basis to know why that they were screaming pedophile, correct? No. But you would agree that your hearing them scream at this one man on the river pedophile, that increased your worries for that one man, correct? Sure. And that part of that is is because when you call somebody a name that dehumanize them, dehumanizes them, that might mean that crowd is more willing to be violent against that person they've dehumanized. Fair to say? Speculation. Overruled. You would agree with that? No. So the word pedophile to you didn't have any particular concern for you? No. It was the same type of word as jerk or some other pejorative term? I believe the kids were just throwing it out there, yes. Okay. And you didn't believe the kids were speaking the truth? I, I had no... Again, I wasn't worried about what they were speaking or what they were saying. I just saw a situation and didn't want it to escalate. And as a result of that, you sent your two boys over there, correct? Correct. And you and Dante and Anthony, they're not teenagers, right? No. They're adults, correct? Correct. And you thought those, your two sons would be able to de-escalate the situation, correct? I did. Um, did you observe Dante go over there? I did. Um, did you observe Madison go over there? I did. And when you saw Madison go over there, did you see Nikolai Mew walk towards Madison? No, what I saw was Madison walk between the tubes and Nikolai and tell him to move on down the river. Okay. Can I Yes.
welcome to use the fresh markers in the package. If he needs, can you see there? Mr. I think I can see it all. Okay. Can the jury see? Everyone on the jury see the. <clears throat> there is a sweet spot in this courtroom where everyone will be able to see. I'm happy for you to tell me that, John. I'm wondering where it is. Oh, okay. Where you're sitting. <laughs> I think you'll have to push it all the way up against the wall. Okay. All right. sitting now versus when sure, I was then. So. At that time, you were over in this position where I had G2 before, is that right? Yep. Okay. And then... The six tubes were over in this direction, is that fair? Correct. But does that look about right? Yep. And then um, Mr. Mew, would he be in this position? No, he was directly in front of the tubes. Right here? Yeah. Okay. I, I, I don't know. Is that what you saw? I mean, maybe six to eight feet in front of him if we're okay. talking spatial distance, but I mean, sure. he was the indirect. Generally that position? Correct. All right. And what you then saw was Madison Cohen come from this position and stand in between him and the tubes. Correct. So if I put an MC here, would that be correct? Yep. She came from over that way. Yep. That's what you saw. Correct. Okay. What do you see her do then? She was pointing downriver and telling him to go, 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 get the fuck out of here, go. Okay. Did you hear her use the F word? I did. Okay. She was that loud? Yeah, because he wasn't, I mean, he was just staring at her blankly at that point. Okay. And you could see that from over here? Yes. And did then Dante come over there too? I don't remember the order that everyone went over there after Did that. eventually Dante get over there? Yes. Did Riley Madison get over there? Yes. Did Anthony Carlson get over there? Yes. Did A.J. Carlson get over there? Uh, A.J. is not a Carlson. I apologize. Sorry. A.J. Martin? Yes. Sorry about that. No, it's okay. I'd love um, to call on my own. but <laughs> appreciate that. And then um, Janelle, uh, what's Janelle's last name? It starts uh, with a D, right? Yeah. Uh, Would you call her Janelle D? Fair enough. Okay. Yep. And then there's a Gabby K as well? Yeah. All right. So and I believe there was another, there was someone else. There was some of the kids' friends I didn't know, so. Okay. All right, just all in the same area around Madison? Um, I, I don't know where they were standing. And I mean, they were behind and to the right of Madison. I think some people had said they'd created, told the police that they created a wall between Nikolai and you and the tubers. Is that what That's you possible. Is that what you remember? I, I, did, I, I don't. I don't remember. Okay. But we know we have at least, if I put a Riley Matson, one person somewhere in this direction. I think Riley was, had actually walked up and stood next to her. Okay. So Riley could be here? Yeah. And then Dante's over in this area? I, again, I, I, I don't remember. Okay. Can I just... I mean, I, I know I'm just trying to make sure we have enough bodies over here, right? So can you put a big D here for Dante? Sure. And then we have uh, Tony's there someplace? Yep. AJ's there someplace? Yeah, yep. And I think Scotty, 
stayed back and held the tubes with me. Scott's over here. Yeah. Gabby Kay's over here somewhere. I don't remember where Gabby was. Okay, well maybe just put her in the middle for now with a question mark. Yeah. Janelle D is somewhere over there. Yeah, I, again, I don't remember. Okay, uh, so somewhere here. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people from your group walked over there. That's how you remember it. Correct. Okay. And then there was the six teenagers, correct? Correct. So at least as we have it drawn here, at some point it looks like there's six of them, five of them, maybe two more that are standing there in Mr. Mew's space, right? Or in front of him, I should say. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't say they were in his space, but... Okay. In front of him. Yes. Sure. Other witnesses have described Madison Cohn as being in Nikolai Mew's face. Would you agree with that? I don't object to the line. I think they could just ask the witness and not what they agree with previous testimony. Sustained. Do you rephrase the question? Do you agree that Madison Cohn was up in Nick Mew's face? I guess I wouldn't describe it like that. If somebody uh, else described it that way, would they be lying? Objection to this. Sustained. time when you're making these observations, you're still sitting in your tube over there at G2, is that right? I think I might have stood up out of my tube by that point, but yes, I was still with the tubes. Okay. Uh, fair to say you did not see Mr. Mew um, touch Madison Cohn. Agreed? That is correct. Um, it was reported to you later by others, correct? It was reported to me by Maddie. Sure. And also by others, correct? Uh, you know, I don't think anybody else told me. Well, didn't you originally tell the police you originally tell the police, uh, in fact, uh, do you remember speaking with investigator John Schultz? Schultz? Do you remember speaking with him? I remember speaking to an investigator at the hospital, yeah. I told you this man over here with the badge on and the uh, tie and the gray shirt with the folder in front of him is investigator John Schultz. Does that refresh your memory as the person you may have spoke with? No. Okay. I'll take your word for it. I, I, I mean. uh, you spoke with a police officer at the hospital, correct? Correct. And you told the police officer she came, and I think you're referring to Maddie. Mm -hmm. give you, she came. The next thing I know, she's like, he punched me, Quentin. He punched me. They said he slapped her, but whatever. Do you remember saying that to Mr. I don't Schultz? remember saying that, but I may, I may have. I won't argue that I didn't. And if you did say that, it was because that was the truth. Agreed? Agreed. And the truth on that day was that Maddie told you he punched her, but others said they saw a slap, correct? Correct. You didn't see anything, correct? I did not. And as you sit here today, you don't know who said slap. You just know some people said slap, correct? Correct. And the only person that told you, excuse me, let me say that. When you spoke with the police, when you told the police that Maddie was punched, you told her that's the only person that said that was Maddie, correct? Correct. And then you used they as a plural to say what the other people said, correct? Correct. Has anyone since then told you that they observed any of that group, Riley Matson, uh, Dante Carlson, Tony Carlson, AJ Martin, Gabby K, or Janelle D, told you that they saw a slap and not a punch? I don't recall that anyone has. I don't recall having a conversation. 
Well, then, uh, obviously there was more severe injuries and those were the concern. Sure. And it was clear that she had been struck. You could see the mark on her face. You, you uh, said that before. Let me ask you some questions about that. Sure. Where did you see that mark on her face? Uh, it was that her cheek was visibly swollen. There was pictures taken and, and uh, they were offered, but I don't know whatever happened to them. Okay. And we'll get to the pictures. Let me just put that aside here for a second. Um, can you point on your face where it is you saw the mark on her face? No. Okay. You don't have a memory of that? Uh, I remember her cheek and, and around her eye being swollen. When you say you have a memory, I mean... I don't know do if you... it was her left or right cheek. I don't... So, so. do you have a memory of actually seeing it? Because when I have a memory, I see a picture there, and then I could see your face, and I could see the mark on one side or the other. You don't have that in your head right now? She was coming at me, so I would say it would have been the left side of her face. Okay. So, um... It again, it's not a quiz, but I just want to make sure that we're the same because somebody else had said they didn't get left and right correctly. And so can you just reach your hand up and touch the left side of your face where you think you saw it? Okay, and again, for the record, you used your left hand to reach up and touch your underneath your left eye uh, on your face, correct? Correct. And in fact, I apologize, but I have a... I couldn't tell from, I have a little scar under my left eye. I couldn't tell from back there if you did. It doesn't no, look like you did. No, just bags under my eyes. I work nights. Nope. I, sometimes we project on our own onto others, and I apologize for doing that. Um, so what you recall is, did she point up to her left side of her face? She came over holding it. Okay. She came over holding the left side of her face, right? Yeah. Um, and when she's holding the left side of her face, I imagine she's holding the left side of her face like you did with her left hand, correct? I believe so. Okay. When she walked over to that group, she had things in her hands, correct? I guess, I, I suppose she probably did. Yeah. I mean, she had a phone, right? I don't know. She had a vape. Again, I, I, I don't know. And she had a white claw. Hand or... Right? If I showed you photos that said that she had those things in her hand, would that surprise you? No, it wouldn't, but okay. I, I can't say that I, I know what she had in her hand because I sure. don't. When she came back to you, she still had the phone, correct? Objection, Judge, I think you just said it doesn't remember. I'm asking now when she came back. I'm asking a different time frame. Fair enough. You can answer the question. I still don't remember. Okay. When she came back, did she have the uh, can in her left hand? Again, I, I don't remember what okay. she had in her hand. Would it refresh your memory to see a still frame of her standing by the tubes afterwards speaking? Can I show that to you? Sure. I'm just going to jack that wrong. I don't think this is a good use of our time. He doesn't remember the photos, may or may not show something different. Would you agree if she's seen after she says that she got punched in the face on the left side of her hand and she walks over to you at G2? Yeah. Right? And if she's seen in the video over there holding a can in her hand mm -hmm. with the phone in her right hand, right? Yeah. she's got her hands full, correct? Okay. Do you agree with that? I mean, if her hands are full, yes, I would agree that her hands are full. And if her hands are speculation on what might be, it's a hypothetical. Well, come on up, please. All right, we're going to get a little discussion right now between the attorneys and Judge Waterman. I do want to bring in our Joe Tamburino while we have uh, a moment right now. Uh, let's talk a little bit about what we're hearing right now. A lot of references in the diagrams to whether uh, groups were upstream or downstream, whether groups were surrounding Mr. Mew, circling him, near him, in front of him.
It appears we're having some audio difficulties. I think you might be muted, Joe, if you would just I'm so that sorry. Place. That's correct. Okay. You are absolutely right. We're hearing a lot of this, and I think it would be very helpful, and I don't know if the prosecution is going to do this, but they should, get what's called a river expert, someone who is knowledgeable about the Apple River. Experts such as that exist because we've heard a lot about how Mr. Mew was walking toward the deep part of the river. How deep is it? How does the river flow? What is the confluence between different eddies or tides in the river? How deep was it where the incident happened? So they really should have an expert, the prosecution, who could come in and say, here's how this river flows in this area, and here are the depths. I think it was also interesting to hear that uh, Quinton's uh, really sent his sons, adult sons, to try and de-escalate the situation, sending Dante and Anthony in. And interestingly enough that he shared that he was concerned because Mr. Mew was drunk and the way that he charged at the tubes, that he was worried, and I'm quoting now, that the old man would get the brakes beat off of him. Yes, and that's significant, I think, for both parties, the defense and the prosecution. For the defense, obviously, uh, this witness uh, was concerned about the defendant's well-being. But from the prosecution, it's very important that this witness thought Mr. Mew was drunk. And what does that tell you? That tells you, again, when you're drunk, sometimes you make bad decisions and do things you would not otherwise do. So this witness is giving things both to the defense and the prosecution. All right, Joe, we're going to go back live into the courtroom now. They're about to show a video. Showing you picture 2657, and I believe the evidence is that this is at approximately a minute and 50 seconds into the video. Is that Madison Cohen that you see in front of you with the blonde hair? That is correct. And she has a, a drink in her left hand? Yep. Judge, I'm going as fast as I can. show you slide 4235. Uh, just to, is that you in the yellow shirt, sir? Yep. And then over here, does that appear to be Madison Cohen with the blonde hair and the one-piece suit? really not clear enough to say for sure but the person who's got the blonde hair in the upper corner there with the uh, one-piece suit does appear as if that person has something in their left hand and something in their right hand I couldn't say from that picture I'm not sure that matters she came over clutching her eye whether it was with the back of her hand her forearm or the front of her hand she came over holding her eye so your previous testimony when you said she had her flats of her fingers up against her eye, you're saying... I didn't say that's, that. Uh, that, that. That's what you showed. So you asked me 
wear on the face, and I used my hand to show wear on the face. I didn't say that's how she was holding her hand. You did. I thought I did both, and if I was wrong, that's fair. Um, so tell me now, tell the jury now, what did you see her do in relation to the point, place on her face where she said she was punched? What did she do? Again, I don't remember. I just remember she was clutching her eye. Okay. Whether it was the front of her hand, the back of her hand, or her forearm, I couldn't say. Okay. Again, this all happened very quickly, and I was able to see that she was okay, there was people stabbed, and that was my concern. And I appreciate that. If it seems like I'm judging you, I, no, I'm not I trying to give that clear. impression. I'm just trying to gather the facts so that the jury can make their decisions. Make sense? Yep. Okay. You said that there was a photo taken of this mark on her face. Correct. Did you take this photo? I did not. Her mother did. did. Okay. And this is something that was told to you? Yes. You didn't see the photo, did you? I think I did. Okay. Who showed you the photo? I believe her mother showed it to me. Okay. And when did her mother show you this photo? We all went and had lunch after the bail hearing. Okay. Um, so and I believe it was at, I believe it was that time at lunch that she showed it to me. It may have been here at the courthouse, but it was that time frame. Okay. Um, and do you uh, are you aware that Madison Cohn gave her phone to the police? She very well may have. I, I mean, I'm not aware of that. But is it your under? Were you told by somebody that the police just didn't want it? Is that what you were told? Well, it wasn't her phone. It was her mom's phone. Okay. So that was and, and yes, I, I was told that the photo was offered up and they said they didn't need it. The police just said we don't need that photo in a homicide case. I don't know how they said it. Okay. That's fine. But that's what your testimony is. That is my testimony. That's what you were told by the Cohen family. That is what I was told by her mother, yes. Okay. That's all. Thank you. Mr. Anderson? Mr. Carlson, do you have a photographic memory? Absolutely not. Do you remember some details of events without remembering every detail? I do. Do you remember how you drove here today? I do. Do you remember how many lefts versus right turns you took? Nope. Do you remember some things from this incident, but not every single incident detail? I would say that's fair to say. Some things were burned into my brain that day. You said um, on cross that you, you thought Nikolai was just a drunk idiot. Do you remember that? I don't believe I used the term idiot, but I think Maybe. that's fair. I might be mis misremembering too, so I don't I don't mean to put words in your mouth. If you think I'm wrong, you feel free to correct me. Um, and I think you said that your fear was he was going to keep antagonizing the boys until they did something. From what I witnessed, yeah. I had watched them walk away from their tubes two or three times and then reapproach them. And your memory from your vantage point was that you could see Nikolai, Maddie, and then the tubes. So like I mean, I could see everything from my vantage point, but what I was focused on and paying attention to at different times varies. Um, you know, I, I think I was mainly focused on Mr. Mew and watching what he was doing um, versus, I, and, and obviously I could see Maddie interacting with him because I was watching him. But if you ask me what the other kids were doing at that point, I couldn't tell you. And your, your view is not a bird's eye view like that drawing? Absolutely not. So if there's parts of your group walking over or standing in between parts of your view is obstructed? Yep.
And so Attorney Nelson drew, drew some locations of people up there. Do you actually remember that that's where those people were? No, I mean, I remember where we were in relation to their group. Um, we were almost in front of them when I got the boys to stop our tubes. Um, we were on uh, the opposite side of the river and... Uh, and I wanna... So Attorney Nelson asked you, um, which cheek was it on Maddie? You remember that line of questioning? Yep. I think you said a couple times you didn't remember. Then he told you about how his memory works, and then you said left. Well, I'm just, I, again, I didn't want to say anything that I wasn't absolutely certain about. I remember it being the left-hand side, but I didn't want to state that without being absolutely certain, and I wasn't absolutely certain that it was the left-hand side. He asked you to pick a side, and you picked? Correct. I don't have anything else. Mr. Nelson? <clears throat> so just, you know, when you say you remember it being on the left-hand side, do you have an image in your mind of Madison Cohen's face on the left-hand side having to mark? Is that what you see when you say, I remember it being on the left-hand side? Correct. Okay. You don't see anything else in your head other than that, right? You don't have any other memory, correct? Well, I'm not sure what you're asking me. Poor question, fair enough. I'm asking in particular about your memory regarding Madison Cohen's mark. And the okay. only memory that you have about Madison Cohen having a mark is the memory that you've told us about it being on her left side. That's the only memory you have, correct? Correct. All right, thank you. You'd said you watched Nikolai Mew walk away two or three times, correct? Correct. And was that before, during, or after Madison Cohen had walked over there? Before. Okay. And when Nikolai Mew walked away from that group of teenagers those two or three times, did you see the teenagers just float downstream away from him? No, because he was in front of them. Okay. So when you said you saw him walk away, you mean he walked downstream from him? He walked downstream. He walked, at one point he walked around the side of him and around the back. He grabbed the tubes and stopped them from behind. And then he walked again in front of them. Um, and he had started to walk downstream from him at that point, and that's when he turned around and charged at them. And I believe when he charged at them, Madison was off the tube and on her way over there and the boys were following. Okay. And you'd said that you had an obstructed view, but you could still see things, certain things. Well, I didn't right? say I had an obstructed view. I, okay, I thought you did, and so did No, you? he asked me if, as they were walking over there, is it fair to say that at times it was obstructed? Okay, so at times it was obstructed. Correct. Well, one of the things that wasn't obstructed is you observed your son, Dante Carlson, hit Mr. Mew, correct? That is correct. And you saw Mr. Mew go down into the water, correct? I saw him fall back onto his backside. Right. I don't know that I'd call it going down in the water. The water was very shallow at that point. Sure. The water was flowing over the ground, correct? Yes. <laughs> okay. It's still the river, correct? Yeah. Whether how deep the water is, he went into the water. Right? Yeah, it was probably 10 inches deep at that point. Okay. He went into those 10 inches of water. Agreed? Yes. And when you saw... Dante hit him and he'd go down into those 10 inches of the water. That's when you yelled stop, correct? Correct. And your son didn't stop, did he? He was I, I don't know that I can say whether he stopped or not at that point. Did you see your son Dante Carlson hit Nick Mew when he was down in that 10 inches of water? I did not. Did you um, see AJ Martin come up from behind Nick Mew and push him when Nick Mew was sitting in that 10 inches of water? I did not. Did you see your son Dante Carlson swing and hit uh, Nick Mew in the front while AJ's pushing him from the back? 
I don't know if AJ was pushing him from the back when Dante struck him or not. I did see Dante strike him from the front. I was unaware of the situation at that point. Didn't know why Dante had struck him. It was very out of character for Dante to hit someone. So I immediately yelled stop. Because you were worried? Because I didn't want it to escalate. That was the whole point of sending him over there, so that hopefully it wouldn't escalate. But it had escalated, right? It had. And then you wanted it to stop, correct? Absolutely. Nothing else. Thank you, Mr. Carlson. Uh, you may step down. Is he released? Yes. All right. Is he under your subpoena? He's under the court subpoena. If I, um his number. I can tell the court at the end of it. He's free to go today. I will okay. certainly inform the court and Mr. Carlson. He's not, he doesn't need to sit in the hallway. All right. So you're free to leave. He may be asked to come back on a different okay. day. Thank you, Mr. Carlson. Uh, while we're in between witnesses, uh, I'd like to have the illustration marked as an exhibit. So let's get a number assigned. I think it would be 102, Judge. Okay, 102. Move within the admission of Exhibit 102. Okay, and that'll be admitted for illustrative purposes only. Okay, Judge, are we talking about the, the handwritten diagram or the, the printed diagram? The handwritten diagram. I had marked Exhibit 101, and I did not offer it because I didn't have a basis to offer it. All right, who is the next witness? Dante Carlson. Mr. Carlson, uh, please come forward. Uh, face the clerk, raise your right hand, she will administer the oath. Please read the testimony of Officer in this matter. Shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you that. Please have a seat in the witness chair. Mr. Anderson. Can you please state your first and last name for the record? Uh, Dante Carlson. And Dante, do you work? I do. What do you do? I am a cook. And how old are you? I am 21. How old were you on July 30, 2022? I was 20 years old. And on that day, were you tubing on the Apple River? Yes, I was. With your dad and some other people? Yes. Um, were you consuming alcohol? Yes, I was. Do you know how much you had? Um, a Budweiser, a White Claw. I think I had just opened a Truly when this all started. And um, at some point, did something catch your attention as you were tubing down the river? Uh, yes, we heard screams for help. And did you... Um, what happened next? Um, my dad told us to post up and then wait, and then he told us to go over and see what was going on. Did he say to try to de-escalate? No, he didn't say de-escalate. He just asked us to figure out what was going on. And did you go over there? Yes. And could you hear the teenagers yelling? Yes. Do you remember what they were yelling? Um, at first it was help, then it was cheering, and then they were calling them names. And did you try to ask Nikolai what was going on? Yes. Did he answer you? No. Um, were you telling him to leave also? Yes. At some point, did you see, did it change from verbal to physical? Yes. And can you describe what you remember about, like, what you were doing, what you saw? Um, I had asked 
Nikolai Mew, what was going on, what's going on. He didn't answer me, so I turned to the kids group and I went, what's going on? And they shouted, he's looking for little girls. And I'm like, he's looking for little girls? confused and then I went again to turn back and get his side of the story and that's when he punched Madison in the face. Did you, what do you remember next after that? I punched him. Uh, can we, actually let me get it ready first. So did you punch him in response to him hitting Madison? Yes. start on slide 2553. I'm going to go through these and ask you some questions. I'm ready. And Try uh, clearing it out and starting again. Trying to plug in, yeah. My screen flashed. There we go. And so we're on 2553. Did you ever see Nikolai with a knife in his hand? No, obviously, at the time, you didn't know Nikolai or the teenagers. No, I'm scrolling to the right. So is that you? Yes. In 2557? Yes. So you're standing right to the right of... Madison Riley. and Riley. I'm going to keep going. So 2661, is that where you're hitting him in response? Yes. Who's that in the yellow shorts on just on the right? Uh, that would be AJ Martin. And then the last he was on the camera, he was walking over? Yes. Is that you? Is that you? Yes. Again? Okay. You didn't notice the knife? No. There either? One. Okay, I'm going to just show you three frames here. Two, seven, four, four. Two, seven, four, five. Two, I guess four frames. 746-2747. Does that look like you're hitting him again there? Uh, it could be. How many times do you remember hitting him? Um, I remember punching him and then that I believe I may have smacked him twice. Two seven eight one. 
You're off, you'd be off to the right of the screen here? Yes. And a 2828, who's that? That would be my brother, Tony. Who's that in the back on the top left? Um, oh, that's Riley. And I'm on frame 2880. Have you seen this video? Yes. Uh, can you hear Tony yelling anything at, at this point in the video? Um, I, yes. I'll ask it a different way. I'll withdraw the question. I'll ask, I'll... If you recall, is Tony yelling anything at you at this part? Uh, yes. What was I that? believe he was yelling at us to stop. And so he's facing you at this point in the video? Yes, I believe so. Stopped at 2939. Now I want to play the video so we have audio. You can mute the screen or block the screen. After you saw Nikolai strike Maddie, did you yell something about it? Yes. Do you remember what you yelled? You never hit a woman. I'm at 156 in the video. Do <laughs> you hear you saying that in that portion of the video? I do. And now I stopped at 157. I'm going to keep going forward. see I'm at 202 Riley clutching her side do you see that yes did you do you do you remember if you saw that at the time or not I do not remember but it was after when she's seen with an injury on the video it was after you yelled you don't hit a woman Enforcement? Yes. At, well, actually, let me back up. So, at some point, are you stabbed? Yes. And what?
what do you remember of, actually just, what do you remember in your mind, not from the video, about what happened after, um, well, I guess first let me ask, do you remember Tony telling you to back up or get back? I remember him pushing me away from the commotion. Okay. And what do you remember after that? Um, I was pushed away and then I heard screaming going on behind me so I had turned around and then I was looking at Nick and he was standing maybe six feet in front of me. He just walked towards me and stabbed me. And what do you recall happening after that? Uh, I went to my dad. Did you see what Nikolai did after that? No. Do you, do you have a memory of the sequence of when people were stabbed? Um, at first, I thought it was Riley, uh, me, Isaac, AJ, and then my brother, but video has shown that wasn't the order. So when you when you were interviewed by law enforcement when you're trying to remember and tell them what happened? I yes. believe that's the order I had used. I can't exactly say I was Were you in the hospital when you were interviewed? Yeah. It was the same day of the stabbings? I think I was at the hospital for maybe two minutes before I was interviewed. So at the scene, were you, how'd you get to the hospital? Were you rushed away in an ambulance? Uh, I remember leaning up against the cop car and then coming to, I was in an ambulance. And then the next thing I know is on the highway being put into, I think, a helicopter. And sometime shortly after you got the, to the hospital is when you were interviewed? Yeah. And did you tell law enforcement that you saw that it was Riley who got hit by Nikolai? I could have. You don't remember your what you said in your interview? Not by heart. stabbed? Uh, in my lower abdomen, I guess, my lower chest area. Can you stand up and just point? Um, right here. I mean, I can show you if you want. Are you comfortable showing your, you do have a scar? Yeah. That shows the exact spot? Yeah. Is that, looks like a little bit off to the center, to the left? Right below your rib cage? Right below my rib cage, yeah. In the jury seat? Permission to approach? Yes. Yes. 31. Showing sure, when it's been marked as exhibit 31. Can you identify what that is? That is my uh, stab wound, I think, two days after I got home okay. from the hospital. Publish. Any objection to 31? No objection, no objection to publication. Received. We just do that one more. Yeah. Oh, do I have to turn it on? Okay. I can do it.
seen the video, is that right? Yes. Um, I, I, do you see yourself get stabbed in the video? No. And Dante, if your if your medical records say that your BAC was the point one one nine, does that seem probably about in the ballpark? Yeah. Okay. I don't have anything. Well, How tall are you and what do you weigh? Uh, six foot and 185. I have, I think, four or five more questions. Did you know if Nikolai was alone or in a group? Mm, I didn't know. Did he ever say he had a group upstream that you heard? No. Did you ever hear anyone threaten Nikolai before you saw the strike on Maddie? No. I don't have anything else. Mr. Nelson? Your testimony was that you had two beers prior to walking over there with the truly in your hand? Yeah. And I would imagine you didn't consume really any of the truly then, correct? Correct. So your testimony to the jury is the extent of the alcohol that you drank that day was two beers, correct? Uh, but I was asked, yes. Well, I'm asking you now under oath, is that truthful testimony? Uh, I had two beers, yes. Okay. Um, in the medical evidence, the medical chemical evidence is that your blood alcohol level was 0.119, correct? Yes. Do you understand that it would take a lot more than two beers to get to a 0.119 blood alcohol concentration? I would. Do you have any explanation how you can reconcile your oath, your under oath testimony that you only had two beers and the medical evidence that your blood alcohol concentration was 0.119? Yes, I had some hard liquor as well. Okay, so when you were asked questions about how much you had to drink, you chose to only say... I was asked how many beers I had. Okay. Um, okay, and so unless somebody asks you specifically an exact question, you're not going to just volunteer information that's hurtful to you, correct? Mm, no, I was not asked the question, so I didn't answer. I figured he was going to ask it next, but... You know, and uh, it's been 21 months now? Yeah. And over those 21 months, you spoke with law enforcement numerous times? Yes. You spoke with the district attorney's office numerous times? Yes. You spoke with victim witness people numerous times? Yes. And you were just waiting for somebody to ask you that perfect question? Objection. Sustained. Were you just waiting for somebody to ask you that perfect question? Same. Sustained. You made your point. Um, the photo, have you seen the photo of the uh, 10 of you guys on the river that day? Yes. And in that photo, you're drinking a beer, correct? Uh, I don't know. I'm showing you what's been marked as exhibit, oh, nope, you're not. Is it 26C, do you see that, correct? Yep. You're not drinking a beer, I had that wrong, correct? Correct. Okay. There's other people drinking beers, correct? Yes. All right. I think it should be 26A, that's what we call the other one. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't read it. 26A, not 26C. Um, the hard liquor that you were uh, drinking, what was that consumed in? A um, it was on a riverbed uh, shortly before we got to where the incident happened, there were shots of butterscotch schnapps out of uh, skis. Okay, and so you had consumed those prior to, just prior to this, right? Yeah. We have to blow up the highway. Perfect. Oh, thank you. Show you what's been marked as exhibit number 25A. Can you see that from where you're standing? Yes. You see here that there's a, a position here that says hideaway bar. You see that? Yes. And then
then we see this here is incident location, correct? Yep. Um, and from the start until you got off the river, you had two beers, correct? Yes. And then you had hard alcohol as well, correct? Yes. All of that hard alcohol you say was consumed at the hideaway bar? I don't know if it was the hideaway bar. It was a point where people could camp and they offered us shots as we were riding down. Okay. Do you know of any other place on the river where you can buy shots at a bar other than there? Uh, it was a campsite. Okay. And so who offered you these shots? I don't know. Okay. A stranger offered you those shots? Yes. How many shots was it? Ten? No, like two. Two shots? Yes. So your testimony is that you had four alcoholic drinks that day, correct? Yes. Do you think four alcoholic drinks for a man who's six foot tall, 185 pounds, over the course of numerous hours would get your blood alcohol level to 0 0.119? I'm not a scientist. Okay. What was the objection? Foundation. Yeah, foundation to calculate is on the BAC. Sustained. Did you think you were intoxicated? No. Um, the alcohol test that you took at the hospital, that was hours after the incident, correct? I do not know when it was administered. Did you have any alcohol after the incident? No. Do you know if your alcohol rate goes up or down after you've consumed alcohol? Uh, I would assume it would go up. Okay. All right. I want to ask you some things about what your uh, dad told you, okay? Sure. You said, uh, well, first off, did your ta dad tell you, um, did you hear him say, go over there and make sure they don't attack that guy? No. Your dad didn't say that? Not that I had heard. Okay. If he told the jury that, would he be lying? Objection, Judge. Sustained. Can we approach, Judge? Yes. All right, we're getting another conversation right now between the attorneys and the judge. So let's bring in our WCCO legal analyst, Joe Tamburino. Let's talk a little bit about what we've just heard uh, from Dante Carlson. We obviously saw the moment where he showed the jury and everyone watching the scar from where he was stabbed. As he says, he admitted that he hit Mr. Mew, knocked him into the water, and then, using his words, smacked him around uh, once or, or twice. Talk about the significance of that testimony. Well, that testimony is very good for the prosecution, and they should have honed in on it more. Because think of it this way. Here is a third party, someone who's not affiliated with either side, Mr. Mew or the group of young people. And he felt Mr. Mew was such a threat to others, specifically to the girl in the blonde hair, Maddie, that he had to use physical force against him. I think that was very good evidence for the state. All right, they are now back to testimony. That information, then you can make more decisions, correct? Yes. And I think you told the police that you went over there because you were acting as a good Samaritan. Is that right? Yes. So you recall um, what did you observe before you walked over there? Um, him hanging around her tubes, grabbing onto the tubes, them screaming for help. Okay. Um, you've watched the video? Yes. You've listened to the video? Yes. Fair to say that there's no time on the recording in which it can be heard that those six teenagers are screaming for help. Agreed? On the video, yeah. Okay. So it's your testimony that sometime prior to that video, they were screaming for help? Yes. Do you aware, were you shown the video that happened two seconds before that in which the teenagers are yelling at Nikolai Mew and calling him a raper? Um. Yes. Were you shown that video? Uh, yeah, I believe I was. Okay. And on that video, did you hear them screaming for help? No. So it's your testimony that prior to them calling this grown man a raper, they were screaming for help on the river? Yes. And after they'd screamed for help, they decided they're going to call him back from when he's walking away and call him a raper. That's your understanding? Yes. Okay. And did you see Nikolai Mew walking away upstream from them and hear them call him a raper? I didn't hear them call him a raper. Did you see Nikolai Mew walking away from them upstream? 
uh, towards the bridge or away from the bridge? Or are they going with the current, against the current? Sure. What do you so, mean by upstream? I, give me a second. So over to your right there is a diagram we drew with your dad, which has been marked as exhibit number 102. Do you see that? Yes. And you see on the top of that it says downstream? Yeah. And on the bottom it says upstream? Yep. Uh, I believe downstream would also be the position of the bridge, uh, 3564 bridge. Does that make sense to you? Yes. And as your dad described it, G2 would be yeah. your group, group two. Make sense? Yeah. And then the six black circles, just for our conversation, would be the teenagers. Does that make sense? Yes. Did you see just before, or at some time, did you see Nikolai Mew walking away from those tubes upstream away from the boys? No. You didn't see that? No, I saw him walking downstream. Okay. What you're, you heard when he was walking downstream, is that when you say the boys were screaming for help? Yes. So was this sometime prior to the video in your memory? Um, it could have been right before they started recording. Okay. Because I... Uh, um. I just want to make sure we're established. You agree that they don't scream for help anywhere on that three minute and 23 second recording. Agreed? Agreed as far as I've seen. Yes. And you agree that in the video just before that, which was started 11 seconds before, lasted nine seconds, in which they call him Raper, they don't scream for help in that video, correct? Correct. And you would agree that when you watched that video, he was walking away from them upstream, correct? Yeah. So what I understand your testimony to be is sometime prior to these two videos, they had screamed for help. That's what you're saying? Yes. And then, or in between the ending of that one video and that three second interval, they could have screamed for help there too. Okay, so you think that they maybe paused or stopped the recording in order to scream for help and then they started recording it then and just didn't say help at all? Could have. Could have, sure, all right. But the other scenario is that you heard this scream for help prior to the Raper video, right? Could have. And if that was the case, you would agree that in the Raper video where they're calling him Raper, he's walking away from them upstream, correct? It would look like that. Yes, okay. Um, so you're going over there in order to gather information, right? Yes. And uh, leading the charge from your group is Madison Cohen. Agreed? Agreed. And when Madison Cohen goes over to that group, you see Nikolai Mew walk towards Madison Cohen. Agreed? Sure. Yes? Yeah. And uh, as he does that, the teenagers' tubes are free to go downstream. Agreed? Agreed. Yes? But yes. When uh, you see Nikolai Mew walk away from the teenagers, clearing a path for them downstream, what do you see the teenagers doing? Uh, I wasn't paying attention to them, I was paying attention to Nikolai. Okay, did you gesture to the teenagers to float down river, we've got this guy now? Like I said, I wasn't paying attention to them, I was paying attention to Nikolai. Okay, did you encourage the teenagers to leave at that point? No. Why not? I was just there to figure out what was going on. Okay. And so when you got there to try to figure out what's going on, did you hear Madison Cohen immediately say to Nikolai Mew, go, get your fucking ass, go, something along those lines? Yes. Fair to say Madison Cohen wasn't asking questions. Agreed? Agreed. Fair to say Madison Cohen was giving orders, right? Yeah. Yes? Yes. And she gave it in a loud, strong voice, correct? Yes. And when Madison Coyne was occupying Mr. Mew, telling him what to do, what were the teenagers doing? I do not know. Did you in any way gesture to the teenagers to continue on downriver? Once again, I was not paying attention to them. I was paying attention to Nick. Okay. But weren't these the group of people that you said you were going there to help? Yes. Weren't you concerned about their well-being? Yes. And so you didn't pay attention at all to the group that you went over there to help? Objection argumentative last and answered twice. Did you, I'll rephrase, Thanks. did you pay attention at all to this group of people that yes. you would, okay. So. I did pay attention to the kids. I did not tell them to leave. I did not tell them to stay. Okay, so what were they doing when you and Madison- Standing Cohen by their tubes. Well, I'm gonna call a timeout here. Um, 
because everything is being written down by the court reporter. We have to have question completed before you start your answer. And please let the witness finish his answer before you start the next question. There's a lot of overlapping talk. Dante, I get a little into a rhythm and I might have cut you off, so I apologize. Same here. We'll both, all right. I, I wanna talk about other things that you may have observed in that interaction there initially with Mr. Co uh, with Mr. Mew, okay? Okay. Um, did you see, uh, you said you're looking for an explanation. When Mr. Mew walked over to you in Madison, did you see Mr. Mew gesture to that other group? Uh, not like that, but I did see him like turn around and point at them, but he didn't say anything. All he did was sit and point. Okay. There was a time, um, is it, you watched the video, right? Yes. And at about one minute and seven seconds into the video, you say it doesn't matter to Mr. Mew, correct? Yes. And fair to say that the reason you would say it doesn't matter to Mr. Mew is Mr. Mew is giving you some sort of explanation, correct? No, he was pointing at the kids. Okay. And I said it doesn't matter, they're just kids. All right. So your purpose was to go over there to get information. Yes. And he gave you information in a nonverbal manner, right? We can call it that. What else would we call it? A gesture. Okay. Um, and when he gave you that information with the gesture, did you listen or did you tell him it doesn't matter? I told him it doesn't matter. Okay. So when you initially said you were going over there to gather information, maybe that's not really what you were doing? Maybe not from him, but from the kids. Okay. So you weren't really interested in his side of it? Not really. Okay. Um, and is part of that because they had called him names? No, it's because they asked for help. I went to go see what the people screaming for help were wanting. Okay. And if you perhaps misheard that and they weren't actually calling for help, maybe that's uh, how this got off on the wrong foot? Maybe, but I'm pretty sure they were screaming help. Okay. Um, You said you heard them cheer, is that right? Yeah. And was the cheering in response to you and Madison walking over? Yes. Would you agree that a group of six teenagers cheering doesn't sound like a group that needs help? No, it sounds like a group that got what they wanted. Okay. Some people to come over and help them. Okay. When you heard them cheering, um, did you hear them laughing? No. Did you hear them giggling? No. Did you hear them cackling? No. Did you hear them use the expression, for the culture, for the culture, repeatedly? I did not. I just heard, woo. And okay. That was and pretty much all I heard from them. And when you hear the, the term woo, you took that as the cheering, correct? Yes. Certainly doesn't sound woo and asking for help are very different things, right? Yeah. Um, at some point, um, did you observe uh, Mr. Mew turn his back on you in Madison? To face the kids again, yes. Did you see him turn his back on basically you and the kids and look downstream? No. You never saw that? Not that I can recall. Fair to say you saw him walk over to you and Madison and the path downstream was clear for quite some time, correct? Yes. During that, would you agree that it's probably clear for upwards of 60 seconds? Yeah. During that 60 seconds, did you ever take the time to tell the teenagers who were cheering that they could just leave and go down the river? No. Did you ever gesture to them to say, move along? Objection asked and answered like 10 minutes ago, I think. I think this is the 60 second entire time, Judge. Let's, and once I do, then it's... Look, wrap it up then. Uh, I do not... Wait, wait for us, he's gonna ask a question. My bad. You can go. I do not remember gesturing to them. Okay. Why not? I wasn't focused on them at that time. Even though they were the ones calling for help? Yes. You were focused on the man that they were calling a pedophile? Yes. Um, and I imagine when you heard that, that made, I think as you told the police, that made you mad, right? No, I was confused. Okay. Uh, and when you were confused, did you stop and gather more information? I 
tried to. Okay, what did you do? I asked, what do you mean by that? Because they said that he was looking after little girls. I went, he's looking after little girls? What do you mean? And did they respond? No, they did not. Did you hear uh, the group say, uh, in response to your question, yeah, he's looking for little girls, we got it on tape, something along those lines? I, that sounds like their answer, yeah. And when you heard that, did you believe that to be true? I didn't know what to believe. Were you upset at Mr. Mew? No. Um, did you hear them call him a pedophile? No, I did not hear it. At least not that I remember. Fair to say you're not a fan of pedophiles. I mean, who is? Agreed. And if you did understand him to be a pedophile, you would think less of him in that position, correct? Understandably, yes. Yeah. You would think he's got less right to be in the space that he's occupying, correct? Especially with children, yes. And you didn't, there were no little girls around, were there? No. And the children that you referred to, it's like this group of 17 year olds, correct? Yes. Group of 17 year old football players who are pretty fit and tall, agreed? I wasn't looking at their statures or builds. I, they looked like children to me, so okay. I had assumed they were children. Okay, and by children you mean is 17 year old somebody that's a children? I would say between at least under 18, but they looked 13 to 17 to me. Okay, that's what your position was? Yes. Now, you made some statements to the police, correct? Yes. You made some statements about the observations that you made on that day on the river, right? Yes. And the statements that you made to the police were that same day in the hospital, agreed? Agreed. And they were statements that you made about your friends that you were there on the river with, correct? Yes. You were on the river with Riley Madison, correct? Yes. She's a friend of yours from high school? Middle school. So you've known Riley Madison for years and years, correct? Yes. And you were on the river with Madison Cohen, correct? Yes. Same thing, a friend that you'd known since middle school, correct? Um, yeah. Right? Yeah. So somebody that, you know, and Madison's clearly got blonde hair, right? Yeah. And Riley's clearly got a, a brunette or a different color hair than blonde, right? Very different? Yeah. Their body shapes are different? Yeah. Their personalities are different? Mm, yeah. You can distinguish between the two of them, right? Sometimes. Okay. Um, and what you told the police, um, on Madison, I'm sorry, on July 30th, they were asking you about what happened, is that right? Yes. Um, and you told them, I thought he had hit my friend Riley and I automatically reacted. That's what you told them? Yes. You used the name Riley, correct? Yes. Um, then you also said to them, me and Riley were standing right next to each other and he like got up close to Riley and Riley pushed him away and he did a swift motion towards her, correct? Yes. And the her you're referring to that sentence is the only name that you used, which was Riley, correct? Yes. When asked, again about it, you told the police, I don't know if Riley pushed him or something, I didn't see that, all I saw was him make a motion towards her and I saw her fall down, so I reacted and hit him. You said those words? Yes. And the name that you used in that situation was Riley? Yes. And the description that you gave in that situation is you saw him, Mr. Mew, make a motion, correct? Yes. And that uh, as a result of that motion, you said you saw Riley fall down, correct? Yes. And then 
response to that, the officer asked you, can you describe Riley to me? Do you remember that? Yes. And you said she is a brunette, skinny, has tattoos down her arm, correct? Yes. And that, fair to say, accurately describes Riley Madison, correct? Yes. Madison Cohen is not a brunette, correct? Correct. You wouldn't use, again, I apologize to, uh, you wouldn't necessarily use the same description of Madison's body as you use when describing Riley, correct? Correct. And uh, you also said the person had tattoos down her arm, correct? Yes. That accurately describes Riley, not Madison, correct? Yes. That's what you told the police on that day, correct? Yes. And then lastly, you told them later in that same interview, I think it was Riley who like went like that, but I'm not 100% sure, and then all I saw was the swift motion, Riley fell to the ground, I hit him, he fell. That's what you said, correct? Yes. So again, the fourth time, you described it as something happening to Riley, correct? Correct. And in each of those four times, you never used the word punch, agreed? Agreed. Each of those times, you used the words uh, uh, swift motion, correct? Yes. That's what you described that you saw on that day about this, correct? Yes. Now today, 21 months later, you're saying, Something different. Agreed? Agreed. Now today you're saying it's not that you saw Riley, uh, not that you saw a swift motion go to Riley, but that you saw Madison get punched. That's your testimony today, correct? Yes. In those 21 months from the first story to the new story, you've talked to Madison Cohen? Not really, but yes. You've talked to Riley Madison? A little, yes. You've talked to others in the group? My family, yes. You've talked to the district attorney's office? Yes. And since you've talked to all those people, you now have a new story, correct? I have a better recollection of what had happened, if that's what you're asking, yes. Okay. So the fact that you were at a .19 on that day, you now have a better recollection today than you did on that day. Is that what you're saying? Well, I mean, they also questioned me when I was on pain pills from the hospital. Okay. I thought your testimony was that they came there and saw you within two minutes of your arriving. Yes. Okay. And so in those two minutes, you'd consume those pain pills and it's your position? Whatever they gave me on that helicopter. Okay. Um, you had said, uh, going back to your statement to the police, I just want to dial in on one of the things. The last time you spoke, you said, I think it was Riley who went like that, but I'm not 100% sure. I want to ask you about that sentence, okay? Okay. There's a video of you give, making that verbal statement. Do you understand that? Yes. And in that video, it shows you move your hand kind of like this. Is that right? Yes. And you had both of your hands up in a uh, manner in which someone would push out towards another person, correct? Or push away from. Sure. They, they were extending their hands, which were close to their body, to push outward towards what's ever in front of them, correct? Yes. That's what you demonstrated when you said, I think Riley went like that. Yes. Can you just show us that demonstration now? I Okay. And you were able to show us that demonstration because that's what you remember as you sit here today. Riley did that, correct? Yes. And in response to Riley doing that, that's when you saw the swift motion. No. I remember it differently now, but... After talking to other per people, you remember it differently. But the thing you After thinking about it for the last 21 months and seeing it every night, yeah. But what you absolutely know, because you said it then and you say it now, is you remember just before Nikolai Mew getting punched by you, you saw Riley Madison push her hands out towards him, correct? Yes. That's for sure, correct? Yes. Had you seen um, Riley Madison get up in Mr. Mew's face? No. 
had you seen Madison Cohen get up in Mr. Mew's face? Not up in the face, but she was talking to him face to face, yes. She would be heard uh, others say it's in his personal space. Would you agree with that? In his bubble, yeah. She's right there in his bubble, correct? Well, like, not in his face, face, but like talking to him like a normal distance would be. Okay. Um, but you use the term in his face. You'd agree with that? Sure. Okay. I want to ask you about what you did to Nikolai Mew, okay? Okay. Um, you um, said you saw a swift motion and you reacted and punched him, correct? Yes. You laid him out, correct? I guess. Well, those are the words that you used when the police asked you to describe what you did to him. You said, I laid him out, correct? Yes. Fair to say that when you used the term, I laid it out, laid him out, you said it with a sense of pride. I guess. I mean, I mean you were proud of laying this man out in response to what you observed regarding the swift motion, correct? No, I was proud of defending a woman. Okay, and so I wanna get into that, right? And so what you understand is you're defending a woman, correct? Yes. Which woman? Madison. Okay, and the woman that you say you're defending, she fell to the ground. I believed at the time she did, yeah. Okay, and you believed that because that was your memory? Yes. And you say that now, I believed it at the time because you know that the video shows she didn't fall down, correct? Correct. So what we know is your memory is wrong, at least in regards to that, correct? Yes. So there's times that your memory is wrong about what happened that day, correct? I guess, yes. There could be many explanations for why it's wrong, correct? Yes. Just the human memory is not perfect, agreed? Agreed. It might be wrong because you were intoxicated. A little. 0.119, right? Yeah. You're over the legal limit, correct? Yeah. You would agree that that might have impacted your ability to accurately perceive things? Uh, I guess, yes. Might have, uh, that might have impacted your ability to accurately recall things? I guess, yes. Another thing that might have affected your memory is perhaps the, the stress and the trauma of everything that happened afterwards, correct? Yes. Um, another thing is is that you could just be intentionally telling an untruth. That's possible too, correct? No. That's not possible? No. Okay. Let's take a recess. We'll come back in 15 minutes. Please take the jury out. All right. All right, we've got a 15-minute break now as they're taking a little bit of a break as we are getting the cross-examination of Dante Carlson, who uh, you just heard. I have WCCO legal analyst Joe Tamarino with me right now. Let's talk a little bit about how Dante has been handling uh, this cross-examination. It appears to me, after uh, seeing his father go before him, that he's handling it a bit better than his father did. Yes, he is. I mean, he's admitting to things that you have to admit to, which is, of course, consuming alcohol does affect your ability to remember things, relate them later on, of course. And I think he's handling the cross-examination very well. Now, I want to ask you about something that you touched on earlier because we had to actually go back into the courtroom uh, to the live coverage. But you mentioned that there have been a few misses from the prosecutors, especially in talking with Dante about why he acted in the way he did in defense of Madison Cohen. Uh, that's correct. You see, when you prepare a witness for trial, whether it's from the prosecution side or the defense side, you need to talk to them first and tell them basically what you're going to do, what you want to get out of them in front of the jury, and also prepare them for cross-examination. And one thing that was abundantly clear through Dante's testimony, but not made clear by the prosecutors, is that he seemed to have used physical force against Mr. Mew because he felt Mr. Mew was a threat, that Mr. Mew had just hit this young lady and could have harmed the other young people. So he, being 21 years old, a complete adult, stepped in and tried to defend others against Mr. Mew. That's very significant evidence, but the prosecutor didn't really use it much. And another good piece uh, for the prosecution was the quote, it doesn't matter, they're just kids. And you say that that is something that should be followed up on by the prosecution throughout this uh, trial. 
Absolutely. That should, when, if the prosecutor does a redirect with Dante, which he should, uh, they have to bring that up. They have to bring first the defense of others because he reacted and, and hit Mr. Mew to defend the others. And second, that these were just children. I mean, he put their ages, I believe, anywhere between 13 and 17. That's how young they looked. So that has to be highlighted. All right, Joe, thank you. What we want to do now is go to some previous testimony from this morning from uh, Alex Vang. He is one of Isaac Schumann's best friends. He became emotional realizing that his best friend had been stabbed. He ran to him, grabbed him. He said that he tried to hold on to the wound uh, and then carried him to shore. Here's some of Alex Vang's testimony from earlier. From what I saw. You don't see Mr. Mew with a knife, right? I don't. Okay, so the threat level, you have nine people around you, he's by himself, and you felt the threat level was high. Yes? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to show you um, number 442440, okay? Is that you? It is. Is that you? Are, are you in this picture? Do you appear to be concerned or afraid in that picture? No. Okay. And is it fair to say that you're not afraid or concerned because the numbers of people have increased in part? Say again. You initially said that you were very afraid and very scared, right? You just said on that photo that you don't appear, appear to be very afraid or very scared. True? Uh, yeah. My question to you is, is that because the number of people that have shown up has increased? Yeah. Yes. So the number, the more people that show up to assist, the less afraid you're becoming. Yes. You are. Right? Yes. Okay. And you would agree that Mr. Me is not doing anything in terms of being, at that point, being physically aggressive to anyone, right? Yeah. He's not... He's not saying anything aggressive either, is he? I don't recall. If he would have said anything aggressive, do you think he would have... I know you didn't remember everything, but do you think you might have put it in your statement? Uh, possibly. I don't know. I don't completely remember what's going on through my head when I was giving my statements. It's... Did you ever ask to maybe do it at another time when you felt a little better? I'm not. Okay. Do you agree there comes a point when you and your group come around to Mr. Mew and are pointing at him and calling him a predator, right? Yes. Okay. And you're doing that to humiliate him, aren't you? Uh, I'd phrase it as calling him out. Calling him out. That's, what, that's why you were doing it? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. And today, I don't want to misquote your testimony, punch or slap? Uh, let's say, I'd say punch, but I completely, I, I don't know all the way. I'd, I'd say I'd estimate a punch. Okay. So, <clears throat> fair to say that if he hits her with his right hand, he hits her on the left side of her face. Right? Yep. So he he hits her on this side of her face. This side, yes. Yeah. Okay. There's been various statements on how it happened. Uh, Juwan Cockfield referred to it as a hook. Is that how you would refer to it? Um. Yeah. It was a it was a pretty good punch. Okay. So pretty good punch with his right hand punching her in the left side of her face. Yes. Okay. Are you aware that he was holding a knife in his right hand? After the video, I did, yes. Okay. So, your testimony under oath today is that he, and he would have had to punch her, right? He couldn't slap her. How would you slap her holding a knife, right? Right? Yeah. Okay. 
So with a knife in his hand, with a closed fist, he makes a, a hook motion and punches her in the face. That's your testimony? Yes. Okay. You told police that he slapped her in the face, didn't you? Yeah. So under oath today, you're changing your testimony? For after I, uh, yeah. Because your memory's better today than it was 21 months ago. I'd say it's about the same or a little better. Okay. So he's holding the knife, comes across her like this, and punches her in the face. That's your testimony. Yes? Yes. Okay. And <laughs> you agree you told police he slapped her to the ground. Right? Yes. You're saying that's that that's a lie. Well, I've seen the video. But I mean to, according to my statement, that's just from what I remembered when when the moment happened. So are you are you tailoring your testimony today based on what you've seen on that video? No. But from what I remember is that she she didn't fall, but she did get hit in the face. Right, but it's much different than what you what you told the police that day, right? Once again, I was in a lot of shock and there was a lot of details that I completely didn't process at the moment. I apologize, but that was the best I could have gave at that moment at that time. And I think you told police when you see um, Mr. Mew get hit, you believe that he's, quote, almost knocked out, right? Yeah, he fell to the floor. Okay. But in your opinion on that day, he's hit to the point that you believe that he might be knocked unconscious. Yes, when I see someone fall to the floor after they get, I can assume that they might they might have fell unconscious or they might have gone dazed. Okay, and certainly falling into the water unconscious, that would be dangerous, wouldn't it? Yes. Okay. And he's a big guy, isn't he? Like on that day, he was a big guy. Yes. All right, so um, when you see a, 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 a man the size of Mr. Mew get punched in the face, knocked in the water, you believe uh, potentially unconscious, uh, He's getting his butt kicked, isn't he? Uh, yeah, I'll say he, get, he got hit, yeah. I mean, he's getting his butt kicked, right? There's multiple people hitting him. Objection to the term multiple. Multiple. You can agree or disagree with the characterization. It's cross-examination. Can you uh, give me the characterization again? He's getting hit multiple times. You'd agree with that? Yes. He's getting uh, hit, knocked on the ground, and then hit again across the face. You'd agree with that? Yes. Right? You see on the video him getting pushed from behind, right? Uh, I don't recall if that was on the video or not. Okay. And my question to you was, you believe he's getting his butt kicked, right? Yes. Okay. if he did anything to you and you said no right no nope. you didn't do anything to him either did you correct So Mr. Troffs, he'd asked you about Mr. Mew getting his butt kicked. Um, when he stood up out of the river, did you see any, see him bleeding anywhere? No. Did you see any marks anywhere? No. His face looked swollen at all? Not that I recall. In contrast, did you see other folks bleeding? Yes. Do you remember how many? At that point when he... From what I remember, I saw the lady who got stabbed, 
um, the man with the stomach open, and my friend Isaac. But there was blood all over the water. Did any of those people who were stabbed at any point have a knife in their hands? No. Nothing further. Mr. Officer. Thank you, Mr. Vang. You may step down. See that was Alex Vang testifying earlier this morning. We are bringing you that as we are in a recess right now, and I'm joined by WCCO legal analyst Joe Tamburino. Uh, as we get back to uh, Dante Carlson on the stand, uh, before we go there, give me just a, a little bit of some of your takeaways from the testimony you've seen here today in day two. Well, in today, I, overall, I think the uh, defense team is having a better day. Their cross-examinations are getting their points across, and uh, the prosecution has, you know, left some openings. Um, they haven't really tied in some very important parts. Uh, one thing that I, that I would think the prosecution would do, though I don't know, is bring in a witness who can testify about the river itself. It's very important for this jury to understand what the river is about, how the river flows, uh, the speed of perhaps of the water, the depths of the river. These are all things that could be known and explained to the jury. There are charts, there are different measurements of all these types of rivers. So I think that's gonna be very helpful. But overall today, I think the defense has done a very good job. We have seen uh, a few diagrams, but I think you're right. Uh, people, you know, us watching, just like the, the jurors, are hearing all this talk about upstream and downstream and having someone very clearly explain that to them, I'm sure would be beneficial. Absolutely, especially the river depths, because we've heard a number of times from the defense that Mr. Mew at some point was going toward the deeper part of the river in order to argue that, look, he was placing himself in peril because if it was deep enough, he could drown if he was being attacked. And, you know, whoever's been on the Apple River, I've been on the Apple River, it's been more than, well, probably 30 years ago, uh, but the river really isn't deep in any spot. And I think it's important for uh, the jury to understand that. And you need an expert witness, basically, who could come in to testify about these river conditions. Are there any other big questions that still remain in your mind that you're waiting for the prosecution to really get to the heart of or to answer with some of the additional testimony over the coming days? Yes, two things. The prosecution has to have some of these witnesses talk about how these young people were basically messing around with Mr. Mew, that they were talking smack to him. You have to give the jury the, the information that these were young people who were drinking and just talking smack to this guy. Uh, the second thing is the prosecution has to point out that no one was holding Mr. Mew below water. Uh, no one was beating him up. He had no bruises or injuries on him. Uh, no one was kicking him when he was down. No one was hitting him in the head when he was down. All of these things that would normally be associated with a beating or kicking someone's butt, so to say, they have to be brought out. And so far, they're not being brought out. I, I've wondered, too, why the defense hasn't asked more of these witnesses why they didn't walk away from the situation. Well, because what the defense is trying to show is that these young people didn't want to walk away from the situation. The defense is doing a good job of portraying this as these young people were taunting Mr. Mew. They were egging him on. They wanted to be aggressive towards him. They were surrounding him. They wanted to uh, belittle him uh, and, and obviously assault him. So it's not to the defense's benefit to say, why didn't these young people walk away? They want to keep giving the narrative that these young people were the aggressors. And some of the testimony that I think was, was very strong uh, today in hearing from uh, Quentin Carlson, uh, Dante's father, was that he was in a mode of, as a third party, de-escalating the situation. He, he wasn't wanting them to get in the middle of, of what was going on to make anything worse. He was hoping to, to really break everyone apart. Yes, and that testimony really could dovetail nicely with what his son said, which is basically he hit Mr. Mew because Mr. Mew had just hit this young woman in the face, just punched her in the face. 
And, you know, a, a good litigator is going to be able to tie those things together, that we have one witness who thought things would be de-escalated, but because Mr. Mew struck this young woman, it wasn't going to be de-escalated, that, in fact, his son had to react. Uh, that's something that would be important for the prosecution to tie together. Now, in Dante Carlson and his cross-examination, there was a lot brought up about blood alcohol content. And I think for a young man or even an older man to be able to speak to that didn't make a lot of sense. That whole line of questioning seemed sort of awkward. Yes, it was a very good job questioning by the defense because, you know, they were getting what they wanted. But it all should have been uh, objected by the prosecutor, and here's why. Unless you are experienced in blood alcohol content, meaning you know about chemical tests, you know how alcohol works, you know the dissipation of alcohol in the bloodstream, how long it takes to metabolize an ounce of alcohol, those type of things, no one would be qualified to say, well, gee, after so many beers, I should be at this level or that level. There really should have been objections to all of those questions. There weren't, and it worked very well for the defense. There were a number of questions uh, that we've heard throughout about whether or not uh, Madison Cohen was punched or slapped. Explain the significance of that. Well, there's, there's obvious a difference between being punched and slapped. And the biggest difference is this. A punch is more aggressive. It's more decisive. You want to cause greater harm. Whereas a slap, you're going to cause less harm. It's open-handed. You're not putting your fist and getting all of your bones and your fingers and your knuckles into someone's face. All right. Thank you, Joe. Court is now back in session. Q&A was about, but it pertained to a witness on the witness stand who either didn't have a recollection about something or did not perceive something. Another witness had testified to those events, and the question was put to the witness on the stand, if the other witness said this, does that make him or her a liar. I think the state objected at least twice, maybe more. I sustained both objections. Uh, there was a sidebar. Uh, Mr. Nelson brought to my attention State versus Victor Johnson, which is a case that I'm familiar with. Um, generally speaking, uh, one witness may not comment on the credibility of another witness, and making comments about whether someone is or isn't a liar, in my opinion, is commenting on their credibility. Uh, Victor Johnson made an exception in some unique uh, circumstances, and that is where one witness perceives the event and says one thing, another witness perceives the same event and says something different. Victor Johnson allowed one witness to say, I'm telling the truth, he's telling a lie, believe me more than the other witness. Um, that's not what we have here because, to my recollection, both of the times the witness either didn't recall or did not perceive the event, uh, so it's not the same situation as Victor Johnson. And I thought that the questions that were being put to the witness uh, was more akin to commenting on credibility. So that's the reasoning for the um, objection being uh, sustained. Mr. Nelson, if you want to add to uh, the conversation, you may. Your Honor, accurately uh, cited what the sidebar was. Um, I, I hope respectfully said I disagree, but I'm going to move on. So I just want to make note that I continue to disagree, but I'm not going to spend any more court time making any additional arguments other than I disagree with that analysis and move on. Fair enough. Uh, let's bring the jury in. Sure, yes. As we wait for the jury, uh, Joe tells me that it is a common defense tactic to get a witness to call another witness a liar. He says the prosecutor was right in starting to object to such tactics. Please. 
be seated. We're back in the presence of the jury. We are ready to continue. I uh, anticipate we will break uh, again somewhere close to 4.30. We'll break for the day then. Uh, Mr. Nelson. <coughs> I would say it was a pretty fast, swift motion like that. Okay, so are you right now going on a memory that you have in your head of what you remember yes. seeing? And what you've just shown us is you used your left arm to move forward in what I would describe a jabbing motion. Would that be fair? I used my right arm. You used your right arm. Okay. Did you see Nikolai Mew use his right hand? Yes. And so your testimony to the jury is Nikolai Mew punched Madison Cohn with his right hand. Yes. And you, can you, uh, just want, I'm trying to use words, the best thing is that I've heard it described as a hook. I saw you do something different. Can you just show us again what it is you saw? It was like, it started from his side and it went out like that. Okay. Um, Kind of straightforward. So his hands in front of him, down at his side. Uh, down at his side, and then it like I guess you could say it was like a hook, but it wasn't. It was okay. like a jab. It came down and it went up. Agreed. Agreed. And it came from his body position outwards towards the other person. Correct. Correct. And it seems like is my arms kind of in my body plane. You see that? Yes. It stays essentially within the body plane is what you're saying. No, it was kind of off to the right. It went like this. Kind of. It was, it, as it went up, it curved to the right. Okay. So again, trying to use words to I don't to know the correct words to use to describe it. We'll sort through it. Um, <coughs> seems like you're saying basically not a full hook, not a full jab, something in between. Yes. Okay. But it's clearly with his right hand, correct? Yes. Um, are you aware that prior to that, what you say happened at about 150 in the video? Is that about right? Do you remember watching the video and it's around the 150 mark? Uh, sure. Sound about right? Yeah. And do you know that in the video you can observe Mr. Mew standing in front of uh, Riley and Madison with the knife in his right hand? Yes. So it's with the hand that's holding the knife that he punches her? Yes. And where does this punch that you say he hits her with, with the hand with the knife, where does that land on her? Uh, the left side of her face. Okay, on the left side of her face? Yes. Okay. And okay. Look to be a forceful punch? Yes. More than just like a little tap? Yes. Uh, like a full grown man punching a woman square in the face, correct? Yes. And it must have punched her, I think you indicated up like on her eye level, is that right? I would say so, yes. yes. Like, and so it would have been near her left eye. On her cheekbone is, I guess, would probably be the best place to put it. Uh, around this area. Okay. Around, and when you just said around this area, it was you, your hand, I think, went I'm a little. Sorry. Like the cheekbone sure. area. Um, just under where your glasses protect your face, correct? Correct. You have on a pair of, would you agree, rather small eyeglasses, correct? Yes. And on that day, Madison Cohen had some oversized sunglasses on, correct? Yes. And so the area that you're pointing to on her face would have been covered by those oversized sunglasses, correct? I wouldn't say covered, but 
sure. sure. So this grown man holding a knife as a hand reaches out and punches her in the eye where her eye, her sunglasses are, correct? Her cheekbone, but yeah. Okay. Right near her sunglasses, correct? Yes. Um, you're aware that her sunglasses are in perfect condition? Objection, assuming the facts are not evidence. Sustained. I'm asking if he's aware of that. Well, I think that's all established. Okay. Sustained. Uh, do you know the condition of her eyeglasses? No. Um, would you expect a woman standing in front of a man with oversized eyeglasses that got punched in the manner that you did, would you expect her glasses to be bent, broken, disturbed in some manner? Objection, speculation. Sustained. The. Uh, when you're standing there and you see this, you must have been ready to respond right away. What do you mean? Well, I mean, you said you hit him immediately, correct? Yes. So there wasn't any time for you to type of assess anything, you just hit him right away, correct? After I saw him punch her, yes. So you saw it and had to have your body like process what happened and then you moved into action, correct? Yes. So it wasn't as if you saw it happening and at the same time you started swinging, correct? Uh, can you? You weren't violent until you saw this, correct? Correct. And when you saw this violence, it must have surprised you. Yes. It must have shocked you. Yes. It must have taken you a moment to assess what are you going to do, correct? No. You just, after that, after you made that observation, you then moved your body, correct? Yes. Would you agree that you're moving that body from making that observation would have taken you a second or two? Sure. Yes? Yes. Okay. Um, you agree that uh, when you saw this, well, let me say this. So why, you punched him, you said, in defense of her. Is that what you said? Yes. What were you feeling at that time? Uh, anger, I guess. Okay. And the anger was at Nikolai Mew, correct? Yes. You've, fair to say, never described to anybody, even today, that your feeling was of fear, correct? I would say, yeah. You agree, you've never described your feelings on that day as to why you punched him, was you punched him out of fear? Correct. Because you weren't fearful, you were angry. Yes, he hit my friend. Sure. And so you hit him in response to hitting her because you were angry, correct? Yes. It wasn't because you believed her safety was in danger, right? You agree? I don't know. I reacted in case I was. Sure. And you reacted by hitting him, not tending to your friend, correct? Yes. After you hit him once, he fell in the water, correct? Yes. And as he fell in the water, you moved to get over him, correct? Yes. You moved to position yourself in a way that you could strike him a second time, correct? Yes. And you moved to position yourself to set yourself up for that second strike to be with your right hand, correct? Yes. That was your dominant hand, correct? Yes. You wanted to make sure the force that you hit upon him was the most dominant force you could use, and that would be with your right hand. I would say, I wouldn't say I did it uh, purposely. I just think my body naturally went to the right side. Okay. To set yourself up to hit him a second time, correct? Yes. Clearly, when he's down in the water on his back, Maddie's safe, right? Yes. She's not in any danger, agreed? You agree? For now, yeah. In that moment, she's not in any danger, agreed? Agreed. And you're not in any danger, agreed? He's down on the ground, correct? Yes. You're not in any danger. You agree? Um, I would say, yeah, sure. Okay. I mean, and you would agree that you and Maddie and the 11 other people there are not in danger when Nikolai Mew is down on the ground in the water after you hit him. Agreed? I wouldn't say agree to that. Okay. I, he was still a danger. Okay. He was a danger while he was on his back in the water surrounded by you and your friends. Yes. And because you believe, that's what you believed at that time? Yes. And you believe that because of the one time you saw him hit your friend, correct? Yes. So you, you observed one act and you thought 
he's still a danger even if he's down and in the water, correct? Yes. That's You were fearful at that time. Or were you still angry? I believe it was a little bit of both. Okay. So when you punched him the first time, it wasn't out of fear. You weren't afraid until he was down in the water. Yes. But when he's down in the water, you're fearful and angry, and then you hit him, correct? Yes. And you do that with your right hand so that you can make sure you hit him with enough force, correct? I wasn't making sure to hit him with enough force, but okay. my body just naturally positioned itself to the right side. Okay. And... After you hit him the second time, you saw your friend Anthony Martin come up behind Mr. Mew, right? No. You didn't see that? No. Were you aware that that happened? Yes. Now that you've watched the tape, you understand that Anthony Martin was coming up behind him, correct? Yes. Okay. I was also being pushed away at the same time, though. Who was being pushed away? I was. Okay. You were being pushed away at the same time, Ant <coughs> let me just make sure. You're, while Anthony Martin is pushing Nikolai Mew down from back. Yes. You're being pushed away by somebody else. I believe I was, yes. And that somebody else was your brother? Uh, no, I think that was a couple seconds later, but yes. I'm just maybe Who pushed you away? I don't know. They pushed me from behind. Okay. Well, let me show you some of the... Let me just... showing you slide 2699. Do you see that? Yes. Do you see, is that Nikolai Mew in the water? Yes. Do you see a shadow of an arm across Nikolai Mew's chest? Yes. Is that the shadow of your arm? Uh, I would believe so, yes. And then I'm going to move forward here. 20. And that's us, what, the, the, those slides up to 2707, that's your right hand hitting him across his chin, side of his face, ear, head. Agreed? Agreed. And then in response to that, Nick Mew goes, the head goes back to touch the water again, correct? Yes. And then as we watch here on the video, Anthony Martin is coming up behind, is that right? Yes. And we see two feet in front of Nikolai Mew, is that correct? Yes. Those are your feet, correct? Yes. You're standing in front of him, correct? Yes. And you're at this time preparing to hit him for a third time, correct? I believe so. And that 2745, that's your hand or your uh, elbow forearm that we see in the upper left portion of that cr frame, correct? Yes. And then um, here, this is your right shin, your right leg, is that correct? Uh, that looks like the top of his head, but I would say it's... Let me go back a couple, maybe it's... Oh, yes, sorry. Does that appear to be your... Yeah. Agreed, nobody's standing behind you here that we were aware of at least? Yes. And then you swing through, and we see through the middle there your hand at 2747 hitting Nick Mew again in the front of his head somewhere, correct? Yes. And while you're hitting him in the front, A.J. Martin is pushing him down from behind, correct? Yes. That's the third time that you've hit him, correct? Yes. You're hitting him out of anger, agreed? Yes. You're not hitting him in defense of anybody there, right? False. I was. You were this. You believed that at that point, you feared for your safety. No, I feared for everyone else's safety. Okay. I no, I didn't fear. Okay, you're getting me confused. All right. Well, let's take a step back. Let's all ask it again. Okay. Tell me in this photo when you're hitting him the third time, whose safety do you fear for? My friends. Okay. Which friends in particular? Um, Madison, AJ, Tony. Riley, Janelle, Scotty, my father, Sheena. Okay. So let's go through that list. Do you know where Madison is there? No. Do you know where Riley is there? No. Do you know where your uh, brother Tony is there? 
Well, I believed he was walking up right behind AJ. Okay. Um, it, you know where AJ is, correct? Yes. AJ's behind Nikolai Mew, pushing him down from behind. Agreed? Agreed. But in that situation, you were worried for AJ's safety? Yes. Okay. And as a result of your fear for AJ's safety, that's why you hit Nick Mew a third time, correct? Yes. And you thought that amount of force was necessary? Yes. Do you think that's reasonable? I did. You did in that time? Yes. And you did in that time because of the escalated nature of everything that was going on there. Everybody was just fearful around there, correct? Yes. Now, let me ask you about that because you say you're in fear, but when you hit him the first time, you had a beer in your left hand, right? Yes. And when you hit him the second time, you still had the beer in your left hand, right? Yes. And when you hit him the third time, you still had a beer in your hand, correct? Yes. Have you heard the expression, hold my beer? Yes. Is that basically like, I'm going to go do something, you should hold this, I'm going to need two hands, correct? Yes. In this situation, you didn't even ask somebody to hold your beer, right? I didn't have time to. You were confident enough that you could do this while holding your beer? No, I wasn't confident in it at all. Okay. Um, so why did you keep the beer in your hand? I was just holding it. Okay. That's all right. Um, I want to ask you some questions about your confidence level as the time passed, right? Okay. Before he, as you say, made a swift motion towards a, a, a person which you now say is Madison, were you afraid? I wouldn't say it was fear, more as confusion. Okay. So up until that moment, you had no fear, correct? Correct. And I would imagine at some point you knew what the numbers were, correct? You knew that there were six people in the original group, correct? I yes. And that you and Madison went over there originally, correct? Yes. So that makes eight. Agreed? Agreed. And then Riley Madison joined, that makes nine. Yes? Yes. And then Gabby and Janelle were standing around there, correct? Yes. Makes ten and eleven, agreed? Yes. And then Anthony, your brother Anthony Carlson joined in, correct? Yes. That makes twelve? Yes. And then A.J. Martin joined in. That makes 13, correct? Yes. 13 against 1, correct? Yes. Imagine you were feeling pretty confident then, correct? No. Didn't feel confident? No. Were you afraid? In a way, yes. Okay. And it's were to believe that in that situation, Objection, that's fair. I'll okay. withdraw. Thank you. You said while this was going on, your brother was telling you to stop, correct? I believe so, yes. Did he tell you to stop before you hit him the second time? No. Did he tell you to stop before you hit him the third time? I don't think so. I didn't catch that. I said I don't think so. Okay. So your brother was telling you to stop, though, correct? I think he was just talking to everyone in general. Okay. But at that point, when you heard him say stop, you had hit Mr. Mew two or three times, correct? Correct. And you would said your brother Tony came up and started to push you away, correct? Yes. So at the time that he's pushing you away, he's also yelling stop. Yes. Fair to say he's telling you to stop and he's pushing you away because you're giving a beat down to an old man? I couldn't say what he was doing. Okay. Or all what he was thinking. All you know is you heard stop and you heard him try to push you away, correct? Yes. Had your brother not told you to stop and pushed you away, would you have kept beating on him? No. You were just, all your anger had gone out? Yes. It took three hits to get all your anger out? I, I guess, yeah. Okay.
been marked as exhibit number 103. Um, this is a drawing somewhat similar to that. Does it at least over here make sense to you? You see the G1 and the yep. G2 and the different groups? Yeah. Do you see the red dots? Yes. Do you see the initials inside the red dots? Yes. Do you see the one blue dot? Yes. And then over on the left, you see a frame number and a time, correct? Yes. Would you agree at about 139 in the video and frame 2387 that that's a rough approximation of where the 13 people and Mr. Mew are on the river? I guess it would be a good estimation. You agree? Yeah. Showing you what's been marked as exhibit number 104, do you see the same kind of configuration? People are a little bit different, but the same general idea? Yes. And you see in the upper left-hand corner, it's uh, frame 2592 at time 149. Yes. And same 13 red dots and one blue dot, agreed? Yes. And agree, again, that this accurately represents the approximate position of the 13 people in Mr. Mew on the river? Approximately, yeah. Move for the admission of exhibit 103 and 104. Any objection? Yeah, I assume this is for illustrative purposes. Yeah. All right, they're both received then. Permission to publish? Yes. And Judge, I just, uh, for accuracy, one of the red dots uh, depicting the group of the six teenagers has the initials LM. I was correctly told that the initial should be W. I apologize. I just want to make sure that the record reflects that. Let's turn on the document examiner. Uh, this is exhibit 103, frame 2387 at 139. And then showing exhibit 104, which is frame 2592 at 149. Can I also just uh, publish in the old fashioned way so we yes. can move on? Yeah. Can I just, take yeah, it? hand it to one of the jurors okay. and they can pass it along. Those are the only questions I have. Thank you. Mr. Anderson. Thank you. Um, I'm going to start out kind of on this subject here. Yes. No, I'm you're, you got it right. Okay, so so here I don't know if the jury can see this more. Can you all see that? So at 2592, Riley and Madison are standing in front of Nikolai, right? Kind of yes. like the drawing? Yes. I'm going to go forward. No, 
Nope, I'm on the wrong one. You gotta go back a little further. Four, six. I think on cross you talked about Riley having her hands up like that. Yes. Do you know if this is what you're talking about, if it was something else? If I you know? think it was when I had punched him. Okay. I'm going to scroll forward. So that's you, kind of like the drawing. Yep. And... Riley and Madison are shoulder to shoulder, like the drawing defense showed. Okay, I'm gonna keep going forward. the stance on that. What's that? So I think it's just like Riley and me were like crisscross. You're on the right of Riley and that's no right? Yeah. Okay. And in my drawing, DC is on the right, Riley, RM is on the left. Right? Well, if you're sitting this way, it's up. Oh, you're kind of looking at it backwards oh. over your shoulder? Yeah. You want me to turn it a little bit? I see what you meant now. Kind of matches the... Yeah. Okay. I, I thought that was MU at the bottom. Oh, gotcha. So, <clears throat> and you, you were asked on cross if when Mew punched Madison, you told law enforcement, you said it was Riley then, that she fell back, fell down. Do you remember yeah. that? If she got hit, she, she testified she got knocked back like that. And if you're Objection. sustained. If you just saw the beginning of her going back, as you and then you respond, would you have seen what happened behind your back? No. Defense asked you on cross, essentially a line of questioning about helps not audible in the video. Do you recall that? You can't hear somebody saying help in the video. Yes. Defense gave you, there must be two options and the defense asked you about one option being, they said help before the videos started. Do you recall that? Yes. 
and then they asked you, and then you said another possibility is it was in the seconds between the two videos. Do you recall that? Yes. Is another option that you just can't hear it in the video over other yelling? Maybe. Do you know which one it is? I do not. You just know you heard them yelling for help? Yes. And did you tell the officer multiple times that you didn't see, that you were looking away and didn't see exactly what happened until you turned back and that's when you saw the strike? Yes. Defense asked you about alcohol, so you would have been on your fifth drink, as far as you remember, how many drinks you had on the river? Yes. Do you know if a drink is 0 .02 per drink, 0 .03, do you have any idea? No. Okay. Testified on cross, you were responding to when you hit Nikolai, you're responding to him hitting Madison. Remember that? Yes. And up until you up until you saw him hit Madison, was there any did you see any punching or pushing? Um not really pushing, but like touching. Yeah. And In response to the punch, you punched, is that right? Yes. And then two open hand slaps, strikes. Yes. Did you pull out a weapon? No. Knife, gun? No. Put him in a chokehold? No. Did you, when he was down on the ground, did you kick him? No. Did people pile on top of him? No. So defense asked you about 13 on one. As far as you remember, and from everything you've seen in the video, was it 13 on one or you hitting him and AJ doing a push? So two. I, yeah, I would say that's fair. I didn't really see anyone hit him or try to go after him. Nothing else. Mr. Nelson? Do you agree that there were 13 people standing there in the position that we showed on exhibits 103 and 104, correct? Yes. You were one of those people, correct? Yes. You were ready, willing, and able to use violence, correct? Yes. And you did, correct? Yes. AJ did too, correct? I wouldn't categorize a push as violence, but... If you're pushing somebody down while their friend smacks them across the front of the face, would you think that's violent? Yes. Um, fair to say that Madison Cohn was standing there in a position that may have been ready, willing, and able to be violent? I don't think so. She'd already pushed him and pulled him and screamed in his face, correct? Yes. She wasn't really gracious with him, was she? You wouldn't characterize that, would you? She's screaming in his face, correct? She's screaming at him, yes. And same with Riley Mattison. Same thing, correct? Ready, willing, and able? Objection on speculation. Of Sustained. Mind. Sustained. Did she appear to you to be in a position that she was ready, willing, based upon her gestures, and capable? Same objection. To cause Wait, violence? No, no, sorry, there's an objection. Sorry. Sustained. Um... I believe you said, and I, I, I want to give you a chance because I couldn't understand it on redirect. You, did I understand it correctly? You said you were not in a position to say whether she fell or didn't fall. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Originally, you told the police she fell, correct? Yes. Why did you tell the police something that you knew was wrong? 
Because at the time I had remembered it differently. Okay, so at that time when you said that, you had a memory in your mind that she'd fallen, correct? Yes. And since that time, your memory has changed, correct? Yes. And that's changed based upon conversations that you've had with friends? No. Based upon you're watching the video? No. Just on your own, your mind said it wasn't the way I originally saw it, correct? Yes. And it's just coincidental that your change is helpful to the state's case? No. You had said uh, that you when you were asking about this help, right? Do you remember they were asking about you heard help, but it wasn't on the recording? Yes. I just want to touch this briefly, right? On the um, exhibit, can I? Publish 103. So I'm just going to put a sticker here because I want to ask you about a different time, but I just want to use the G2 and the G1. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So there was a time when you were over in that position where the circle is G2, correct? Yes. And then that's when you said you heard the, the teenagers yelling for help, correct? Yes. It was when you were over there by that position, correct? Yes. At that point, the phone would have been with Jawan Cockfield over here by G2, correct? Yes. So you would agree, had, let me ask this, all of the people in Jawan Cockfield's group were closer to the phone than you were, correct? Yes. So if any of those people, including Jawan Cockfield, had have yelled help, that voice would have been closer to the phone to pick it up than it would have been to your human ear, which was farther away, correct? Yes. Could be that you're just wrong? No. You for sure heard it? Yes. Even though it's not on the recording, which was right by the voice? Yes. And you're as confident as that as you are in all of your other testimony? Yes. Even if we didn't see it on video, you're still confident that it was a punch? Yes. Nothing else. All right. Thank you, Mr. Carlson. You may step down. Is he released? No. All right. Uh, please see the witness coordinator in the back. She'll give you instructions. Next witness, oh, we'll call Landon Lawyer. Landon, W. Please come forward. Keep going. All the way into the well. There you go. Uh, please face the clerk. Raise your right hand. She will administer the oath. Do you swear that the testimony you are about to give in this matter shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth of God? Yes. Please have a seat in the witness chair. Mr. <clears throat> Smith, Dad. Oh, we state your name for the record, please. Landon Wire. Uh, how do you spell your last name? W-E-Y-E-R. How old are you? 19. Um, what do you do for a living? Uh, I play football at UMD and go to school there, but I'm in the process of transferring right now. And by UMD, do you mean University of Minnesota Duluth? Yeah. <clears throat> um, where, 
do you live when you're not a student up in Duluth? Uh, Stillwater, Minnesota. Uh, do you live at home with your parents? Yep. Uh, were you familiar? Were you familiar with a person named Isaac Schumann? Yep. How did you know Isaac? Uh, we've been friends. We were friends since I was like seventh grade. You described your relationship as close. Yes. <clears throat> Do you recall uh, the day of July 30th, 2022? Yes. Were you with Isaac that day? Yes. Uh, were you with him on the river when he was killed? Yes. <clears throat> were you part of the group uh, that had met at Stillwater High School and rode over with an Alex Bang's uh, vehicle to River's Edge to rent tubes? Yes. Um, were you with the group the whole day? Yes. Do you remember what time you got on the river? About what time? I do not. Um, were your tubes uh, tied together? Yes. Uh, did that create one big raft? Yes. Were you all sitting on the tubes? Yes. Because you were going down the river? Yes. Um, did you have any alcohol to drink? Yes. What did you personally have to drink? Uh, a couple beers and maybe a couple shots. Okay, what kind of shots did you drink? Uh, Tito's. Is that a vodka? Yes. Did you have any, uh, use any other substances? Uh, we also smoked. And when you say you smoked, is that referring to marijuana? Yes. Um, did you see Isaac Schumann using any mar marijuana that day? Uh, I, I don't remember. Okay. Um, at some point, let me ask you this. Despite the alcohol you drank and the marijuana you used, do you have a recollection or a memory of what happened that day? Yes. <clears throat> At some point as you were going down the river, did you have uh, contact uh, with the defendant, Mr. Mew? Yes. Do you know whereabouts that was on the river? Uh, towards the end. Do you remember any landmarks being in the area? Um, not really. Right, were you, have you had, had you ever been on the river before that day? Yes. <clears throat> um, when you first saw Mr. Mew, what did he appear to be doing? Uh, he was standing in short water um, with the goggles and a snorkel. All right. Did you ask him or anybody in your group ask him what he was doing? Uh, said something along the lines of, yeah, what, what, is, what are you doing? Okay. Now, did he answer? Um, did you hear him answer, I guess? Not right away, because we were too far away. All right. As you got closer to him, did he say what he was doing? Um, he mentioned something about little girls. Okay. Did you... Do you know how close you were to him when he said that? Not necessarily, no. All right. Um, at some point, did Juwan uh, Cockfield... Uh, Call him some names. Yes. <clears throat> um, you're, are you aware that Joan Cockfield had been recording what happened? Um, at the time, not necessarily. No. All right. Have you seen that video since this happened back in 2022? Yes. All right. I'm going to play the first portion of the video and I have some questions about it. Landon, do you recall um, this moment on the river back in 2022? Yes. What is Mr. Mew doing in that portion of the video we just watched? Uh, looks like he's about to reach over me and stop to grab our tubes. Are those your legs in the video where we're stopped? And I guess the timestamp is four seconds. Uh, four, at the four second mark? Yeah. Uh, were you sitting next to uh, Joan? Yes. Um, 
Does Mr. Mew come running up to where you are sitting on the tubes? Yes. <clears throat> Does he grab at the area where your legs are? Yes. Did he physically touch your legs? Objection leading. Sustained. Did Mr. Mew make any kind of contact with anybody on the tubes? Uh, I believe when he was reaching over, he touched me a little bit. All right. Can you play it? We're going to continue the video from 04. <laughs> We stopped at 12, 12 second mark. That portion of the video, um, what do you do when he comes up and grabs onto the area where your legs are? Uh, I was just scared, just got up. Did you bail out of your tube? Yeah. <clears throat> Did you have some concerns about what he was doing when he came up and reached towards you? Objection leading. Overruled. Uh, yes, I was scared. Did he say anything as he came running up to you? I, I don't remember. All right. Did he give you any kind of explanation for why he was grabbing at your legs? No. <clears throat> Did you have any adults with you in your group? No. Everybody in your group 17 at the time? Yes. <clears throat> After he grabbed onto your tubes, did you see what he did next? Do you remember? Uh, I don't remember. All right. At some point, um, did he take several steps away from your group? Um, not, I don't remember. Okay. Do you, did you say anything to him as he was interacting with you originally? Uh, I, don't, I don't necessarily remember. Can you keep your voice up, please? I, I don't remember. All right. Do um, you know whether you called him any names? Um, I mean, I, I might have said that he was a uh, pedophile or something like that. Um, did you swear at him at all? Uh, no. Uh, did you threaten him? No. At some point, did another group on the river come over to see what the heck was going on? Yes. Did you know any of those people? No. <clears throat> um, were they uh, older than you, if you know? Uh, I didn't know, but they appeared to be adults. And what did you see happen when the adults came over? Um, they, had, they had been saying the same thing we were saying, telling him to uh, leave us alone and go away. Right, and did you ever see him leave? No. Um, at some point, do you recall uh, laughing at him? Yes. And why were you laughing at him? Um, once more people came, I felt a little bit more comfortable and with the, uh, adults being around. Um, so I was, in, I felt more comfortable. Did you ever hear Isaac Schumann say anything to Mr. Mew that you recall? No, not that I recall. All right. Did you ever see, I'll strike that. <clears throat> when the other group came over to check to see what was going on, do you remember uh, the, the, the gender of the folks that came over initially? Uh, both boys and girls. All right. Um, At some point, did you see the girls having a argument with Mr. Mew? Yes. Um, do, you, do you have a memory of that? Uh, yes, they, I remember she was telling him to leave us alone and go away. All right. Do you recall where you were standing at the time they were having that conversation with him? Uh, I was standing in front of um, him next to Jawan in the video. You were, do you have an idea of how far away you were? Uh, probably feet away. All right. At some point, did you see uh, Mr. Mew um, react physically to these women that are yelling at him? Yes. What did you see him do? I saw him strike her. Okay, which one did he strike, if you remember? Um, she had blonde hair. She was standing right in front of him. Okay, did you know him at all? Or know her at all? I did not know. Um, 
you see which hand he hit her with? Um, not necessarily, no. I think it was his right hand. All right. Did you see whether it was a closed fist or a open palm? I did not. I mean, did you see whether he had a, a knife in his hand at the time that happened? No. All right. Um, after he punched the blonde woman, what happened next? What did you see happen next? Um, I saw um, him get punched after, and then um, I saw people stabbed. All right. When, when Mr. Mew got punched, did he go down in the water? Yes. Did you or any of your guys jump on him, hit him, kick him while he was in the water? No. Um, how many people did you see actually hit Mr. Mew when he was in the water? Uh, I only saw him get hit when I from the, f the first initial strike. All right. At some point, did he get up out of the water? Yes. Um, did you notice at that point if he had a knife in his hand or not? No. Um, <coughs> eventually, did you realize that there were some people? Did you, did you see some injured people eventually? Yes. Do you know how they got injured? Uh, the first thing I saw was someone holding their uh, stomach. That's the first thing I saw. Did that cause you concern? Uh, yeah, that was very traumatizing. Did you uh, flee the area? Uh, I just, I was standing there for a while and then I ended up going further away next to the tubes. All right. We're gonna show you a still frame from uh, the video, Juan's video, and I'm gonna ask you to some questions about it. All right. Um, this video, do you see two people? Yes. One in the foreground, one in the background. Yeah. Um, which one is one of them? You? Uh, yes, I'm in the background. All right. Um, you estimate how many feet you are away from the person in the foreground? Sorry, what? How, how far away are you from the, the person that's uh, in the blue shorts there? I'd say maybe 10 feet. All right. We're going to scroll through from, that was, uh, that was 2596, I'd like, or pardon me. to scroll through from 2891 um, and I'll ask you some questions about those pictures too. Starting at 2891. <coughs> you can stop it there. We're at 20, 2926. Um, Landon, do you see Mr. Mew uh, in this frame? Or at least his arm? Yes. Uh, do you see if he's holding anything in his hand? Uh, looks like there could be a knife in his hand there. Had you moved from your previous position that was shown in uh, 2891 where you were standing? Uh, I, I don't remember. All right. You didn't, do you remember rushing up towards him or doing anything like that? No. Um, did you ever lay a hand on him? No. Did he ever lay a hand on you? other than when he grabbed onto your tubes? I don't believe so, no. Did you ever get close enough to him where he could have done that? Yes. At least in this video, this part of the video, you were, uh, I think by your estimate, about 10 feet away. Is that right? Uh, yeah. Right. <clears throat> At some point, did you realize that uh, 
Isaac had been stabbed? Yes. How did you know that? Uh, I believe Jawan screamed out his name, and then I looked and saw. Were you with Jawan um, by the tubes later on in the video? Yes. You heard Jawan call out? Yes. Um, did you go to where Isaac was? Eventually, yes. Did you see that he was wounded? Yes. Okay. What did you see? Uh, I saw a cut in his chest. <clears throat> did uh, you or other folks in your group try to assist him? Uh, yes. Um, Jawan and Owen. Owen had his hands on the wound and Alex was holding him up. All right, did you eventually move him over to the shore? Yes, that was on the shore when they were doing that. Um, at some point, did some other folks stop to help you guys? Yes. Did they provide care to them, medical care? Yes. Okay, I'm going to back up here a little bit. Prior to Mr. Mew punching the blind blonde lady, did you see anybody strike him in any fashion? No. Did you see... Let me ask you this, did you have a knife that day? No. Did you ever see anybody within your group with a knife that day? No. Did you see a knife on anybody that was involved in this incident? No, not until I saw that uh, people were stabbed. I, didn't, I never saw anybody have a knife. Did you see where Mr. Mew went after he was done stabbing folks? No. <clears throat> um, at some point, was Isaac taken off the river by uh, medical personnel? Yes. Did you go with, with him, follow him? Uh, yes, I, I was. Yes. Did you, was Isaac first taken up to the, um, the road near the bridge? Yes. Uh, did you speak to uh, any police officers uh, while you were still near the river? Do you remember? Yeah, I don't remember, no. Um, was Isaac taken to the hospital? Yes. Did you go to the hospital with him? Yes. Uh, do you remember speaking to a police officer at the hospital? Yes. Uh, did you tell them what happened? Yes. What you saw? Yes. <clears throat> do you still remember the, um, the face of the person who did this? Yes. Do you see him here in the courtroom? Yes. Can you point him out? What he's wearing? Yes. Can you say what he's wearing? Uh, he's wearing a suit, a uh, blue suit with gray pants. And... Right. Nothing further. Mr. Mayor, your office here. So, Mr. Weyer, you are, uh, I want to make sure I got this right. Two of the six of you that were there that day are now college football players. Yep. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Cockfield plays college football, and so do you? Yes. Okay. And what position do you play, sir? Uh, safety. Okay. Um, and how big are you? Um, 5'11", 180, uh, 7 pounds. Okay. And you indicated... Uh, uh, direct examination that you had been consuming alcohol that day, is that right? Yes. And you had been using marijuana? Yes. Okay. You were asked by officers questions about your drinking and, and how much you believe you had to drink, is that right? Do you remember that? Yes. All right. <laughs> and you were asked that um, by officers in comparison to what Isaac had been drinking that day. Do you remember that? Yes. Okay. And you had said that, uh, in your opinion, Isaac was the least drunk person out there, right? Yes. Okay. So you believe, in your own mind, that you were more intoxicated than Isaac, right? Uh, I believe that Isaac seemed to be composed. That's why I said that he seemed to... So to answer my question, do you believe that you were more intoxicated than Isaac? I don't know. Do you think you had drank about the same as he drank? I, I don't know. I wasn't keeping track. Okay. Now, you just testified on direct examination that I'm going to talk to you about the first contact you have with Mr. Mew. Okay. Um, 
that first contact, you testify that he's standing in shallow water, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, you guys are asking him questions? We're saying something along the lines of, uh, why is he standing in shallow water with snorkels on? What is he doing? Yes. Okay. And your answer was, uh, today, he told us that he was something about little girls, right? Yes. Okay. You also never mentioned that to the police, do you? Uh, I, I don't remember. You don't remember whether or not you told the police that this gentleman was looking for little girls? You don't have any recollection of whether you told them that? I, mean, I believe I said that, but I, I don't remember. So you believe under oath today that you you did tell someone that? Uh, I object, Your Honor. He says he doesn't remember. Well, Overruled. Let's clean it up. I, I don't remember. I thought I saw it to the, said it to the cop at the hospital. I'm sorry, I missed that last part, sir. I thought I said it to the cop at the hospital, but I do not remember. If I told you what you said to the cop at the hospital wasn't that he was looking for a little girl, but rather, I can't even tell you what he was saying. He said something about little girls, but I couldn't recite exactly what he said. You'd agree that's not what you tell the police. What you tell the police is, he was saying stuff, I can't tell you what he was saying. Right? That's what you tell the police, though. Right? Uh, that's what it says. Mr. Mew, would you agree with that? I object, Your Honor, to use so on other witnesses' testimony. Sustained. Sustained. Do you believe you were antag your group was antagonizing Mr. Mew? I believe that we said things to him. Well, we all know you said things to him. Did you say things to him to antagonize him? I don't know. That's Calling him a raper and a pedophile and a predator. You would say those are things to antagonize someone, yes? Um, yes. Okay. And to your knowledge, he's by himself, right? Yes. Okay, so this, and you see that he's a little bit older and a little bit out of shape, right? Yes. Okay. And your group, you've already said, has at least two college football, future college football players in it. And you were scared at that point? I was a 17-year-old kid, I was scared. So the question is, the answer is you were scared? Yes. Okay. And you were scared of what physically could happen? Yes, at the time he was much bigger than me. Okay. And we've heard on the tape that uh, someone says, you've got 10 seconds. Do you recall saying that? I do not. Do you recall someone in your group saying I do you've not. got 10 seconds? I do not. Okay. So I think you told the police that once Mr. Mew comes over, you'd agree he comes over to your tubes, right? Yes. Okay. And do you remember that he had a snorkel in his mouth at one point? Mm, when he I, comes over? I don't know. I just remember he had one. Okay. And he then walks around your tubes. Is that true? I don't remember. You don't remember. Um, do you remember him leaving your tube, where your tubes were and walking what would be downstream a little bit. You remember that? I do not remember that. Do you remember him turning his back to your group? Uh, you remember that? Yeah, I remember that. Do you remember your people in your group approaching Mr. Mew? I do not. Can I ask you, what do you remember about that? 
about? About that particular part of the, the incident. Do you remember anything about it? I do. Okay. So after he walks around your tubes, what do you remember? I remember that we walked away and then people came to us and then we were standing in front of him and I'm standing by my tubes. We're all standing by our tubes in front of Mew and uh, people were talking to him. So I want to make sure I understand it. You said you walked away or you said he walked away initially? I was by my tubes. Okay. So, you don't remember him walking away from your tubes? I do not. You don't remember him turning his back to you? I do not. I do not. You remember the blonde person, the blonde woman come over though, right? Yes. Okay. And do you remember Mr. Mew walking over to her? Remember that? I do not. Hold on, hold on. Please, gentlemen, it's late in the day. We're tired. I just want to have a clean Q&A. Please keep the side conversations, the table talk to yourself. That's where I'm going to end it. Mr. Wire, I'm going to show you, we're going to start this at uh, 51 seconds, okay? And I'm going to stop it and just see if that maybe uh, does anything in terms of helping you remember anything, okay? secure. Okay. You agree that when he walks over toward the blonde, you guys can pass on by, right? Yes. Don't you want to get away from him? Um, yes. So passing on by would be a way to get away from him, yes? Yes. But you don't. Your group stays, right? We stayed there, yes. Yeah, and you stay, right, because you see this woman coming over and she's giving it to him, isn't she? She's yelling at him. She's telling him to leave. Right, she's telling him to leave, but you agree you just could have left, right? Yes. Okay, and I think you said this, you're becoming, as the numbers increase, your fear level is decreasing, right? Because there were adults and I was a kid, yes. So the answer is the more people that show up, the less fearful you're becoming? Yes. Okay. And you're, would you agree that your confidence is rising as well? I would check your honor the relevance. I don't understand the question. But Sustained. Your confidence in the situation in terms of what's going on. It's, you're becoming more confident in your position there, right? Same, same objection. Steve, come on up if you have questions. Oh, okay, Judge, that's all right, thank you. Um, do you feel safer with more people around? I felt safer with the adults around, yes. Okay, and with the adults around, does your behavior to Mr. Mew change? Um, yes. It, become, it becomes more taunting, right? Uh, becomes less fearful. Okay, well. 
able to, sh do you show signs that you're becoming less fearful? Uh, yes. Okay, and you do that by taunting him, right? Um, yes. Okay, you, do you remember this? There's a point where your group is kind of around him. You're all pointing at him in his face, calling him a predator, right? You remember that? Uh, I remember that people had called him that, yes. And, you, and that happens after these other people come over, right? Yes. Okay. So once you see, and then tell me if I'm right, there's about four or five people initially that come over, right? I, I do not remember how many people came over. Okay. Well, I want to ask you. I need to mark this. Yes. Uh, so I, want to, I just want to show you what has been marked as exhibit number 105, and we can show you. Can you tell me, uh, do you, is there a picture next to kind of a diagram there? Yeah. Is that fair? Yes. Okay. And in that picture, can you tell the jury if you recognize, what do you see there? Uh, I see Nikolai. I see Isaac. I think that's Ryan. Ryan Nelson? Um, in those swim shorts, I think that is. I, I'm not 100% sure. Okay. It, is it fair to say those are the, some of the guys that you're, minus Mr. Mew, they're some of the guys that you're with, right? Yeah, it's uh, tubes as well. Okay, and your tube, there's pictures of your tubes there, some of them? Yes. Okay. To the right of that, um, you would see where it says G1 and then there's a G2. See that? Yeah. Okay. And if I tell you that the blue M stands for Mr. Mew, um, and these initials are the people in your group, okay? Okay. Do you think that that is, in this particular picture, a fair estimate of where people are? For example, Mr. Schumann's in front of Mr. Mew. Mr. Nelson is over to the side, like you mentioned. Is that a fair and accurate representation? Uh, it seems roughly correct, yes. Okay. And so just, I guess I would move 105. Any okay. objection? Well, I don't objection, Your Honor. I'm looking at it. And, uh, well, what's, the, what's the objection? Our Nelson's listed twice. It's not accurate. So the objection is it's foundation? Foundation, it's, it's not the evidence. Mr. Officer, do you want to clean it up with him? I will judge him. So, Mr. Weyer, in terms of making sure I have it right, Mr. Nelson was um, labeled twice. What wasn't labeled on there, if you can take a look at it, we've changed it. You were with a gentleman by the name of Owen Pellicoy, right? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> and He's now written in there. He wasn't written in there before, right? Uh, yes. Okay. So now, with the change of changing Ryan Nelson twice to now adding Mr. Pellicoy, does that appear to be a fair and accurate representation? If LM is me, yes. My last name starts with a W, though. Understood. They have been getting your name wrong, so. But otherwise, it's a fair and accurate representation. Now, Objection. Received. Uh, what was the number again? I'm sorry, what, the exhibit is 105. 105? <laughs> so, Mr. Weyer, at, at one point where, um, and you, you, I guess I'll ask it to you this way. You hear the blonde, uh, her name is Madison Cohen, she comes over and she's, uh, you describe her as being in Mr. Mew's face, right? She was standing by him. Front of Sorry? She was standing in front of his face, yes. Right. You use the description in his face, yes? If that's what I said, yes. Okay. And to you, does in his face mean she's kind of in his personal space? It just means in his face, face to face. And 
during the time that she's, that Ms. Cohen's doing this, Mr. Mew's not reacting in any type of violent or aggressive way, right? He's, stand he's, yelling at him. he's standing in front of her, not doing what she's asking him to do. In a non-violent, aggressive way? Yes. And when you guys surround him and start calling him predator, pedophile, what's the purpose of that? Um, he said something about little girls, so with him being a grown man, that's... He said something about little girls, so that had us feeling like he... That had us feeling like he was a predator. So you felt like he kind of deserved it, right? I felt like we were saying that because of what he said. Was that captured on video by chance? I don't believe so. So, other than your statement today, there's no other recording or, re or written documentation of that happening, right? No. As you see Madison Cohen and the other woman, um, Riley Martin, as you see them in his face or in front of him, as you described, um, I'm going to bring up 2611. That, tell me if that's you. When you're ready. Ready? Oh, yep, sorry, dude. That's you, right? Yes. Okay. And this is, if you remember, seconds before, you, moments before Madison Cohen, you say you see her punched, right? This is before um, I saw her get punched, yeah. Okay. And I'm going to run you from 2611 uh, and, and move it forward. But before I do that, I want to ask you this. You look like, that's Juwan Cockfield holding the camera, right? Yeah. Okay. You look like you're looking at him. Is that fair? Yeah. Okay. And do you recall, are you guys like looking at each other laughing about just what's happening? I don't necessarily know what we're laughing about or looking at each other, just looking at each other. Okay. You're not sure why you're laughing, though, right? That's what you just said? For the specific reason, no. Okay. All right. You're not, is it fair to say at this point, you are not looking at Mr. Mew or Ms. Cohen? True? Yes. That's true? Yes. Okay. information that that's the point where Mr. Mew strikes Ms. Cohen. Would that be fair? Do you, would you recognize that as that that's the timing? Um, I don't know. I, I can't see. Okay. Well, we'll play it a little more. Right, and now you see Mr. Mew going down, right? Yeah. Okay. So, you believe the woman who's in the front here with holding the, the alcoholic beverage, she's the one that gets hit. Yes? Um, the other person. I, I can't remember. I, didn't, I was behind her, so I just knew she had blonde hair. You were behind her, and you were looking at Juwan Cockfield, right? 
I was looking at Juwan before he struck her. Okay. What I want to know is, can you say whether or not that blonde woman in this picture is the person that you saw get struck? I would think that's her if that's the only girl with blonde hair that was in it, talking to him right before. Well, there's another woman in the picture as well. <coughs> See her leg there? Yes. Tattoo on it? She had blonde hair as well. You can't ask me questions, but what I can do is just say whether or not you can pick out which one of those two people was struck. I can't. I, I don't know which one it was. Okay. Do you know how she was struck? Just remember him striking her. I don't exactly know how. Which hand? Um, I don't remember. I believe it was the right. Okay. And do you know where on her body she was struck? Her face. Okay. Uh, there's been various demonstrations as to how that happened, meaning what type of punch it was. How would you describe it? I don't remember. I just remember him striking her. And you, I think you said she went down, right? That's what I thought I remembered seeing, yeah. That, she, that you saw her fall to the ground? I thought she fell to the ground, yeah. Okay. And do you, did you, do you think that because that's what you saw? Yeah. Okay. You'd agree that blonde girl right there, she's got a drink in her hand, right? You see that? She has a drink in her hand, yes. Yeah, you see the uh, cell phone in her swim top? See that? Yes. Okay. And she looks like she's yelling, right? Speaking, doing something? Her mouth is open, yeah. Okay. You're saying that you saw her fall down. I don't remember exactly which girl it was. It was the girl with blonde hair. I was behind her, so I don't know if that's exactly the... But what you're certain of is one of them fell. One of them for sure got striked, and I thought they fell to the ground, yes. Okay. And then you describe to officers as a bunch of guys came and got on him, right? That, that's how you use the descriptive, right? That's what I said, yes. Okay. So you see him get... I, I saw him get punched, yeah. Okay. And then you say a bunch of guys came and got on him, right? What would you mean by that? I just saw people flock towards him after the woman got striked. <clears throat> Do you see anything else after that? After he went down? After he went down, then I started seeing people who were stabbed. You saw people stabbed after he went down? After he went down, got up, then I seen, I just saw people stabbed. Did you see him struck while he was on the ground again? I did not. Did you see him get struck when he was being pushed in the back? I don't remember. Okay. Did it appear to you that he was getting the worst of this? He was getting beat up? I remember that he, after he punched somebody, who somebody came and punched him. All right, I, I get that. The question is, when you say a bunch of guys came and got on him, are you saying that you believed he was getting beat up? I believe that people went towards him after he had already struck somebody. And were beating him up? I saw him get punched. I didn't see anything. After that, it was a commotion. Okay. You said that you were close enough. You got close enough to Mr. Mew that he could have hurt you, right? Uh, yes, I was standing feet away from him. Okay, he didn't hurt you, right? No. And you didn't, you didn't touch him at all, did you? Uh, during when he was standing over there, no. Like, what, at any point, do you put your hands on Mr. Mew? No, I never touched him. Okay. And so he never touches you, does he? He touched me earlier on. I mean, he never touches you in a way that causes you any injuries. I never got injured, no. Okay. okay.
Ms. Brady. Thank you for your time, sir. Mr. Smith, Dan. Just a couple, Judge. Uh, Landon, did, did you ever call oh. Mr. Mew a raper at any time that you had this interaction with him? I don't remember specifically saying anything, but I do remember hearing things on the video. People. I, I want to ask you exactly what you remember yourself saying. Do you remember yourself ever calling him a predator? Uh, no. Do you remember other folks in your group? I remember hearing people say it, yes. Right. Did you ever call him yourself a pedophile? Sorry, what? Did you ever yourself call him a pedophile while this was going on? Not that I remember. Were other people in your group calling him a pedophile? I just remember someone calling him something along the lines of um, that pedophile, yes. Um, they asked you about the blonde girl falling down. Um, as you sit here today, is that something you remember happening or is that something you think might have happened? I remember her getting struck, and I, I thought she fell to the ground right. from what I remember. That, that, is that your recollection of the event? Yes. Right. <clears throat> Mr. Chir Chirofsky asked you about your statement to the cops that a bunch of guys got on him. Um, do you know how many guys got on Mr. Mew after he fell in the river? No, I just remember as soon as she got punched, several guys you know, took were any of those guys people from your group? No. Right. Nothing else. Is there a trophy? No. All right. Thank you, Mr. Wire. You may step down. <clears throat> we see the witness coordinator in the back. She'll give you further instructions about where to go. All right. We are just about at 4.30, so we are going to recess for the day. Uh, the bailiff will take you out in a moment. My uh, instructions for you tonight are the same as yesterday. Uh, do not begin your deliberations. Do not talk with others about this case. Uh, do not uh, interact with the attorneys, uh, the witnesses, the parties, the members of the public. Uh, do not conduct any independent research about the case. And do not watch or read any media reports, including social media posts about this matter. Uh, we will get started tomorrow at 8 o'clock. Um, please report to the same door that you did this morning. Uh, Warren should be there uh, to greet you. Uh, please take the jury out. You've been watching live coverage of day two of the Apple River stabbing trial in Wisconsin here on CBS News Minnesota. When testimony resumes in the morning, you just heard the judge say at 8 o'clock, we will bring it to you live here on the stream. Also want to point out that our digital and web teams have some recaps that you can read and testimony videos that you can watch on WCCO.com. You'll see it right there on our homepage. Our Jonah Kaplan will also have more tonight on our news at 5 and 6, including some of the most emotional testimony from uh, the victim's mother and some of his friends, as well as some intense exchanges that took Took place during cross-examination today. I'm Derek James from the WCCO streaming desk. We head next to the four already in progress here on CBS News Minnesota.